Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome. This is Berean TV. I'm Apostle Robert Jenkins, and we are here again. It's a Monday morning. It's uh, August 31st, last day of the month. I'm telling you, time is really flying, but God bless everybody. You know what we ask you to do? We ask you to hit that share button. Please share this on your page. We thank God for everybody that's able to come on. Thank God for your comments. Thank God for your prayer. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I know we did, and uh, God is doing some great things. He's a whole lot of things is going on in the news. A whole lot of things is coming up. And so we're going to talk about a whole lot of things. If y'all been watching Brother Moran, he been letting them have it. <laughs> and so I thank God for We're going to talk about a lot of things. This is a ministry that allows dialogue. We sit down, we talk, we got love for one another. We do address a lot of issues that may be sensitive for you. It may pinch you a little bit, but I want you to know that we do believe in God. We do believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we believe that, and that's the ultimate thing. But we bring about truth. We've been called to do that, to shine the light on anything that may pull you away from God, that may pull you into bondage. And so you're going to hear a lot of things. We do, if this is your first time coming on, we have a lot of people that's in, that make comments. It comes from various things. We don't reject anybody. So don't allow the comments to be to offend you. People have a right to the expression. And if we feel like there, there need to be some correction or there need to be some clarity on it, we will address those issues as God leads us. And we thank you for that. So God bless you. Welcome to another teaching from Berean TV. And we appreciate all that you do. I want to talk about false lights, man, because I've been, I tell you, it's amazing all the things that's coming up and the infiltration that's going on in the church, the infiltration that's going on in the world. And a lot of these things have a, a Bible tone to it. It has uh, scriptures that people are quoting scriptures, they're claiming God, but it's really a false light. And a lot of times we can't distinguish. So I want to talk about the false lights, not only people being false lights, but the false lights that we are embracing as if it's God and it's truth. And sometimes we walk in alone, it's almost like when Eve was having this conversation with the serpent and not realizing what was going on in the conversation. And there's a lot of there's a lot of serpent conversations going on, and we're not detecting that we're being deceived. And so I want to talk about the power of the false lights. And a lot of it has to do, and I know this may sound religion, but our personal lives are not lining up with God. And when your personal lives are not lining up with God, it's the level of carnality that you're living that you make uh, things accessible to you. And you start to be driven by certain things. It's almost like when you don't let God be Lord in some things, somebody's going to be Lord there. I'd uh, rather you worship God, but I want you to know you are going to worship something. And so when you have not made God your key of living, uh, and you really have not searched the scriptures to see God's eternal life, a lot of false lights show up. And the, and, and the bad thing about this that I'm experiencing is that people who should know better are not doing better. People who should know better, who've been in this thing for a long time, you shouldn't be a novice. That shouldn't have got you that easy. It's like you shouldn't say you made a mistake on your eighth baby. You, you got you got seven other babies, so you shouldn't be making them kind of mistakes. And then I'm seeing the level of rebellion that even when the truth comes up, people are literally rebelling. They are protecting the false lights. It's like people are getting mad at you and attacking you and feel like you're the problem for bringing up that, that that's not God. And so I'm seeing rebellion, which now is a spirit of witchcraft. People are being people being bewitched. It's almost like what Apostle Paul was addressing. And there's a lot of people that you're being, you're being bamboozled, man. You're being conned and don't even know and then don't want the truth, believe in it so much. And so I'm, I'm, I'm asking God for strategies of how do we cut that light away? How do we expose that light when it looks like God, sound like God? Some people believe it acting like God, but it really ain't God. And then you got to deal with what, what, what makes you think you right and they wrong? So then you run into that argument because you you want to believe your way is right, my way is wrong. And can we have those kind of dialogues without getting offended, but still without compromising the stand? And this is why, I, you know, and this sounds old timey too. We got to go back to some old things that kept grandma. What kept grandma mm -hmm. and granddaddy from not being caught up? Well, there was a whole lot of things out in their time too. But even though we count, we kind of call it old folky, uh, that prayer life kind of kept grandmother from not falling into some things. And we have been so open now because of a fence. And this is another thing, because of, of a old fence, uh, false lights are easy to come in.
because we've already been offended by the so-called true life, then we don't even want anything to do with that. So if that's the real life, I'm already done with church. I'm already done with preachers. I don't believe in the fivefold ministry. I don't believe in spirituality. And so now it's easy to embrace all these false lights that are coming in. And so I want to talk about that and how do we deal with it? What's the hope that we have behind it? Uh, just because we have love for you, do that mean I can't tell you the truth? Because a lot of people are hiding behind the love issue. So now I can't tell you the truth because I'm supposed to just love you. Like, you know, truth ain't supposed to come in. Grace supposed to come in, but not truth. And the Bible says law came in by Moses, but grace and truth. Are, are we in a point now that the false lights have deceived us to take the grace of God without the truth of God? So we want the love of God, but we don't want sanctification. We don't want holy. So I want to address that. And then the last part is how how much have you spent time with God that you can recognize the light of the devil? If he can turn into a light, can you distinguish the difference between the two? Are you skilled enough or are you just hiding behind the anointing and hiding behind uh, uh, spiritual things that are not necessarily connected to God to hide you from identifying real false lights because they out there and i'm telling you they from the pulpit they got on robes they in positions they got power uh they make it, they have authority but they're not true and so i want to talk from that from that aspect this morning how can and my thing is how can the people of god the people of the book how can the people of god be so easily deceived Right, Anytime, right. even with politicians, we'll get them and they'll come around election time. They'll come up in the church and they'll right. dupe us. How how can we so uh, us that have the truth of God's word? If the Bible, right. if we claim that the Bible is truth and we trust the veracity of Scripture, what the Scripture tell us? How can we be so easily deceived and fall into this stuff? Fall into the, these other movements? Now I'm saying I'm gonna throw it all out there: Black Lives Matter and all of right. this stuff. How can we fall into these political movements? How can we fall into this? this, this I'm gonna tell you right now, Apostle. This race thing is something big Ooh. i was telling them yesterday on the video um that not yesterday i was traveling the day before that wesley muhammad is coming back with the whole yaku doctrine and and europeans are of a different race and they were invented in that oh you know that whole nation of Islam yeah. doctrine and minister farrakhan they got the, another video floating around in heavy rotation how can black people be so quick to forgive the enemy and then he right. bring out other points too he said listen when you start dealing with the jews you can't find the jew to forgive hitler and there's some things that we got to look at there's a lot of stuff going on where do we fall in that and how can and how do sometimes as believers true believers we get caught up in the things when we're supposed to know better we're supposed to know this thing is spiritual right we're supposed to know this thing is deeper than what it actually is come on son and you know it's so amazing because when they expose those different levels it exposed that what we were not getting in church. If we was getting what we supposed to have been getting all those years in church, we would know where our identity come from. It's sad that we're in 2020 and we still believe our identity come from the color of our skin. Even though a lot of us like to quote Martin Luther King, don't judge me on the color of my skin, but the context of my character. But we turn around and saying black lives matter. Now do that contradict what he said? Because we're doing the same thing with our skin but what they said they were doing with our skin. So now we have a problem with that. All those, in the, and that's exactly the truth. But it's a twofold because when they start exposing different issues, it exposed that we have not been getting the truth. We still don't know who we are. We still don't have our identity. So why have we been in church all these years? What have we been learning? What have Sunday school really been doing? All these man powers and women that are loose, have they really made a difference with all these conventions? And billions and billions of dollars we're taking from the saints, and now when we have a war, we're not prepared. So we spent billions and billions of dollars of so-called getting training, but the training really never took place. And now that we're in a fight, it's like taking martial arts for 10 years, and your first fight, you get beat up by somebody who can't fight. There ain't no way in the world you're supposed to be studying under Master Chung. Bruce Lee is your teacher, and you got beat up by a guy who's six years old. And this is what's going on. And we getting beat up by people who are not even skillful in what they're doing. They bringing up something that has been documented for years, the false the false presentation of it. You, There's too many books written out to show you that that person is not credible. That's not a true doctrine. That didn't come from Christianity. We ain't even read books that's been written over hundreds of years ago. You should have read that book. How you been in church all your life and you never read this book? You never heard about this guy? You, I mean, these words shouldn't be foreign to you. People shouldn't be saying to us, or they go kind of deep. We should, we're not deep by bringing up Freemasonry. It's not deep by bringing up deep state. It's not nothing deep about that. You haven't been studying and spending time. And this is an indictment on the church. 
Because what have we been studying? We got to relook at these Sunday school books. We got to relook at the Bible. I mean, you said you've been using the Bible. What part of the scriptures you've been teaching on? What have you been preaching on that the people are not prepared? And now these other camps are coming in and they're coming in strong. And not only are they embarrassing what we believe, they are embarrassing what we have been previously been teaching. And so we have not learned anything. And so we can't blame the educational system who passing kids who don't really know how to add multiply. Well, we're passing people in church who really don't know anything about God and the doctrine and the identity and purpose. That's one on one. You should know who you are in Christ. We're hid in Christ. I'm not hid in colors. I know the movie called Hidden Colors, but we must be hid in Christ. And so this is an insult, and we got to deal with these things. And 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 you're right. The person said the very elect could be deceived, and we haven't studied them scriptures to even know that. I mean, what's amazing me that we don't even have another scripture to fight these wars. We are in these debates. They bring it up Bible, and we don't have anything to bring up. They bring it up history. We don't even know anything about our history. How long have we been fighting about learning our history? We say we we need to learn our history. A black man got to know his history, or or it, it repeated itself. Well, church is repeating itself. Uh, mm -hmm. A spirituality is repeating itself because we didn't know the history of that. And then we're not honest to deal with the poison. One of the major reasons why we can't be, we can't have these battles and, and these camps are taking over because we don't want to be honest about the, the toxic mess that's been going on in the church. If I can't tell the truth, then I can't correct it. You got to let me tell the truth. If the bishop got what he got from the devil or got from these cults, we got to expose it. And so they are exposing what's wrong with what with, with our interpretation, with our preaching. And I hate to say it, but, the, but with it, I would say within the last 20 years, all of the things that the church are revisiting did not come from bishops bringing up clarity. It came from other camps making us aware of what we were being taught was not right. We learned about the proper way of not tithing, the improper way, from other camps. Other camps brought up that you're tithing wrong. Other camps brought up the Bible. Other camps brought up the, the Christmas tree. Other tree brought up that. Why didn't the people that we have so much honor and we gave them pastors anniversaries and we gave them all this money why didn't they expose that to us and so we got to deal with that and that's real talk that's real talk and so and so but we got to make a change and so we got to make a change because and think about it is not only are they in there they are in position this is something that's rooted and grounded now when you have people who come in with a shovel and say we got to dig this stuff out we can't practice this anymore now now we are haters now we're not loving everybody because we believe everybody should come in there's no restrictions there's no god don't never say no god don't never say stop this is a problem to allow the other camps to come in and i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you I am embarrassed for the people who are representing the truth, who are making all this money that they're not showing up at these meetings. I need to hear, and this is not to, to I'm not trying to bring ne negativity, but I am bringing up truth. Where are you, Bishop T.D. Jakes? I need you. We need people who are supposed to be scholars in the word to, to grab a following. If you get five and 10 and 15,000 people, then who come out of that camp that can begin to stand for the real truth of God's word that come against? Because these camps are saying the Bible is not to be trusted. They say Jesus is not real. They're coming against spirituality. They're taking us to another spirituality in the name of spirituality. And so now we, we are more hyped about mystery stuff that is not biblical, then we are biblical stuff that is mysteries. Very, very true. And to be honest, it's some stuff that it's because people can say what you want. There's a something in the human heart that's seeking divinity, that's seeking God. A lot of individuals right. are out here looking for a deeper spirituality. Have we just been using it? It's easy to it's easy to, to, to stay stuck in emotionalism. Maybe right. we've just been playing music and dancing and jumping and just enjoying the singing. And, and we, maybe we've been doing that a little bit too much. This could be the problem. Maybe we need to get back to some good old fashioned. Somebody said jackhammer. Maybe we need to get back to some good old fashioned reading, studying, praying in God's word. Or maybe we've just been doing a little bit of praying and we have an old time. We haven't been doing that much studying. 
Right. Because like you said, we're not supposed, especially if you've been going so much, why does right. it seem like people that don't even go to church have a deeper discernment? Not everybody now. I'm not putting this across the table, but how right. it seems like people that don't even go to church have a deep, deeper discernment than people that's caught up into the churchianity. This is some type of problem. And now you have people that's totally, I'm talking about, they say, boy, I'm not, there's nothing in the building for me. Where did that disgust come from? Right. Come on. Real talk. And we got to address that. And we can't act like uh, something wrong with them when they have evidence of it not working. It, you know, people have generations. People say, man, I watched my grandmother go there. Matter of fact, I lost my dad to religion. I lost my mom to religion. She was so busy pr uh, praying, but she was at none of my games. I don't even feel loved by my mother. I don't feel loved. That's real talk. When it has broken up the family. When you when your wife has more loyalty than the bishop than she has to the husband, and so the husband is saying, "I'm not coming to that church. My, that 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 man of God can get my wife to buy a brand new dress. I knew nothing about it. She snook and took money out the account and bought a dress for the anniversary, and never have I even saw a dress until anniversary came. There's a whole lot of things that's going on that we have to address. And I know it seemed like week after week we picking on the church, but the church is sick. We can't ignore the sickness. Can you can't ignore people are mad now because COVID COVID could have been told to us years ago. Well, how much other stuff could have been told to us years ago? So don't get upset when we finally expose it, but it's real talk. And there, it has broken up homes. There are people there, like you said last week, uh, there's a lot of young men who fathers are pastors. They're done with church. How can a, a young man father be a pastor and he's done with church? What did he see in his home? What did he see in the church that make him done with something that his father loved? How can your children hate something that you love? They despise the very thing that you love. That means it's separating. That means somewhere there was some false lights. And maybe what they saw in church, they didn't see at home. And we have to deal with that. We have to deal with our studying and going over these scriptures. Dr. Michael says, if the Bible does not make you feel like, if the Bible, if Bible study does not feel like work, you're not doing it right. Dollar you gotta dig, we gotta God. dig. I agree. We gotta definitely yeah, dig. Agree. Or is or is this God? Is God allowing uh, is God allowing a stirring? Because we anything that seems and like a violent shaking, anything that seems mm -hmm. uncomfortable, we automatically think it is God. But in order to grow spiritually, a lot of times you got to get into an uncomfortable place by right. nature. When we're too comfortable in something, we start right there. We chilling right here. We setting up camp right here. Right. We setting up camp right here until things get bad or something stirs us. Then when it stirs us, we're going to call out to God. Come on, children of Israel. We in the book of Exodus. We see what's going on. And, and, and the Bible says when things got harder, when, when they put more work on it. Because the Pharaoh said, y'all running around here idle. The devil right. is always going to try to test us. And he'll try to keep us busy. He'll try right. to give us stuff to keep us busy. And we've been busy doing a whole bunch of church things. Right. We're going to be busy doing a whole bunch of things, Martha, in the house and around right. God, but not dealing with God. Not at right. the feet of Jesus, but you in the house doing all the church stuff. Right. We're doing all the stuff good. I'm cooking and Mary ain't helping me. And we're trying to draw others away from the feet of Christ. And right. we've been doing that with our engagements. We've been doing that with our anniversaries. We've been doing that with all our, with all our conferences. We, you can, you can conference yourself to death. You can conference yourself out there. You jump from conference to conference. You get back home. You behind in the morning. You don't spend that money. You don't chase that profit. You don't did this. You don't did that. And you ain't no closer to God. We got to start examining this thing. <laughs> and you know it's it's the truth and we have to examine the emotionalism even like you know dr michael talked about bible study uh and this is not for all churches but i would no, say a great amount of churches uh when you walk into bible study, and I, I i don't go to the building that much but when i do go to the building i'm usually offended by what i see it's it's, it's a terrible thing and and i would say this for most of the churches that i visit I don't even believe they should call it Bible study. I mean, how do you have a Bible study where you can't ask no questions? I've never heard a study where you can't ask the teacher any questions. And then there's no material. If you go to the average church and you go to the Sunday school class, if they even have Sunday school, look at the Bibles that they're supposed to be giving the kids. There ain't no real study Bible. I don't even have a concordance on it. How do you have a Bible that don't have a concordance? There is no real tool. When you can't say study and you don't have no strong concordance, you don't have no lexicon, most people don't even know what those words when I teach leadership class and I tell the leaders to come to the class because they believe they're leaders, I said, did you have a lexicon? Did you know that 98% of the people in my leadership class had never had a lexicon, had never had a strong coordinates? Mm -hmm. It's sad, but they, they are leaders in their churches. They're only drawn to me because of the level of revelation that they're hearing something they never heard before, but they never had tools. So how did you even get to that place? Can you really be a Bible student person without the tools? Is it possible to know how to build a house? 
house effectively without a hammer, without a screwdriver. I wouldn't hire a plumber who don't have tubes. I don't have nobody doing no roofing and he don't know what shingles are. That's real, that's real talk. And so we don't even know. So these churches that, but most of the time Bible study is just another Wednesday night service that we that we really look at to get an offering and mid, money in the middle of the week to be able to pay the note. Let's be honest. The, most of the teachers that teach it are not teachers. You can't put people in position because they showed up. We look for teachers who ever come three Sundays in a row. We need a teacher. Would you mind teaching? But they're not really teachers. And do we know the difference between somebody's teaching and a teacher? a real qualified teacher that's going to make a demand on the students to learn. If you won't have a real teacher in place, he don't have the heart to know how to pull on the people, to bring them their minds to another place. And so this becomes a problem because you ain't going to find that when you go to your witness Bible study. No. You're going to find them, they, they really study it. When you go to the Mormons, they really study it. They know their doctrine. They know what they believe. But when it comes to us, it's not. But when it comes to us, we, and this is not picking on, this is just giving it like it is. If you go to a Pentecostal church, what are you going to know is first? You're going to notice how well the musicians play. You're going to notice how well people can sing. And they're going to give you a great emotional thrill, but not have any real word that's, been, that's going to be able to sustain that in life. Now, some of them may understand their own doctrine. And so they may understand that I believe that if you're not baptized in Jesus' name, you're not saved. And they, they may know three or four scriptures, but if you go anything outside of that, they are in trouble. And the problem, guess what? The problem in the school systems is not that your son hasn't been baptized in Jesus' name. The problem with the health care is not your doctrine. The problem with police brutality is not with your doctrine. It's with how people are handling life and how people are handling people. And we can't have church doctrine that doesn't prepare us for life. This doesn't prepare us for life and how we live it. And so we got to get back to that. And we got we to gotta bring some truth. And then we got to, even this, I tell people what I'll say, they say, I got a strong concordance. I say, you can't stop there. Because there's some things in the strong concordance that is limited even in that. We need to understand lexicon, and we need to understand apologetics, and we need to understand how to execute the scripture, and there's much more. There are people who wrote books hundreds of years ago that have an insight that's beyond where we are today. I can go back to some old books that was written years ago, so you can't tell me that this is new, because I'm telling you the people that I've studied, they wrote this years ago. So what was, we've been off course. See, and we have to be honest with that and get to the point that we're going to make a change. These conferences, we need to talk about it. I, you know, it sounds good, woman, dog, loose. But it's sad when a woman goes to a woman, dog, loose and come home and now don't respect your husband. You so loose, you don't think you need your husband. You don't think you need your kids. You so independent, you don't know oneness in the marriage. That wasn't the purpose of you being loose. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Come on, preach now. That wasn't the purpose at all. <laughs> <laughs> See, and when and when we pull that scripture, that woman was loose. She had been bent over 18 years. She was loose from demonic activity. Are we really setting people loose from the demonic activity? Or are we helping them be bound in the name of being loose? What if you went to the conference to get loose, but really you got bound into the religion? What if that's how you that's how she'd been in the church 18 years? Her bound was come from the church. Jesus had to come to the church to set her loose. So we got to be honest with this and we have to deal with it. And I know it seems that we're critical, but we have to deal with the emotionalism. Yes, I'm emotional. I love music. I grew up under Earth, Wind, and Fire and Frankie Beverly. So I'm emotional, but I don't want to leave their emotion. I don't want to be an emotional dummy. I don't want to be uneducated. I don't want to be an idiot in position. I don't want to have authority with no character. I want to know how to deal with the demons in my own life. I don't want to be like Samson who can kill a thousand people with a job on their ass and come home and sleep with another woman. And I can't deliver my own self from my own demons. And so we got to get back to this real teaching from real teachers, five-fold ministry, people who've been seasoned, people who understand it, who are practical, who can make it plain so that we can understand. In defense, I'm not studying martial arts to get beat up. And we've been in class and we can't fight a demon on life support. And and, oh. and the reason that's a problem is we got to, first of all, we got to, we got to say that if you do have a good assembly, if you do have a good gathering, Bible study, if you're going to a good church, you don't, you shouldn't take it lightly. That's right. really teaching. You shouldn't take it lightly. A lot of people, they don't even, a lot of people have never seen good church. Some people got saved in craziness and <laughs> trying to develop spiritually in, in, in crazy because you could get saved in the zoo. 
A lot right. of people don't understand the, the truth of God is so powerful that people right. can get saved under people can get saved under a ministry that ain't even working for God because God's word is being spoken. Like the apostle Paul says, no matter what Christ is still being preached, and once Christ is preached, deliverance can't come. But the problem is you won't be able to grow inside of that thing. Right. Another thing we got to look at is a lot of times these people, these teachers, there's a lot of people that have positions as teachers, as assistant pastors, and they just end it because of political purposes. They just say they close to who they connected with. Oh, that's the bishop's son. That's the bishop's daughter. Let her get in there. And she don't know but four good scriptures. What Bible right. study is she going to have? So we turn Bible study into church, into emotions, into jumping. So we would even leave what we would call Bible study with no answers. And now things are being thrown in our face, coming across our timelines because of social media. I spoke with them the other day and we were talking and they said, well, if you're going to have a class, listen to this. And these are bishop. I respect. These are people. They got churches. Bishop and them, they, he got he got 700 members strong on the Sunday morning. Wow. That's decent for the city. That's decent for the city. And they were saying, listen, even if you're going to talk about certain things like the canon, you, there's some way that you have to, like, you can't just allow people to come into discussions. Listen to this. Y'all tell me what y'all think. You say, you can't have people just to come to quote unquote class or have people come into discussions and hearing certain things about Enoch and Gad and Jasher and all of this other stuff. They need to have some type of qualifying test just to open up the room to them. They just can't come and you're, you're online and you're just allowing people to come and to hear certain things. Well, and, and I agree with that. I say I understand, but the problem is when we start dealing with stuff, they said when you bring certain things out, it's not good for people. Dealing with Enoch in the Ethiopian church, that's not good for people. But I said, well, wait a minute. There's Mike Kaiser and there's other people that's already putting it out there. You, Enoch and these other books are already in heavy rotation on YouTube. So these people, these are virgin ears. They've heard this stuff before. So they need to have it um, spoken or shared about in a controlled environment. The other guy said, if they want to do a controlled environment at seminary, we went to school to learn. That's what they need to do. If they really want to know the difference, they need to go to church to learn. We leave that stuff for seminary and the stuff that we do in church, we leave it for church and Sunday school. I'm going to put that out there. You tell me what you think about that. That was, a bit, that was the other minister talking. What do you think about that? They say, they say certain things need to be just left over there, but they don't know people already talking. Right. Right. And that's the one I say. We have, you know, I always seek for wisdom and everything. When I look at the wisdom, I do agree. And this is why I say all the time the church has messed up because it doesn't have a criteria. Because it doesn't have a criteria in a curriculum. Like you don't teach a, a five year old how to multiply because you understand that he doesn't know how to read yet. And so he goes to kindergarten first. And in kindergarten, they teach it on called the learning of association. And so they have pictures and they have a picture of a spoon, a dog, or anything that they may say that relates to when he get home. And so he can associate those pictures with his experiences. And then when he leaves from that, they teach him the alphabet. And the purpose of the alphabet, now he can form based upon the 26 letters, he can form words and he can begin to know how to do sentences. But they don't try to teach a paragraph when they never taught the alphabet. But because the church, we don't know the ABCs of the gospel and we don't teach it as the ABCs. We want everybody to walk into our congregation and people at different levels and we don't separate classes because church should be set up like an institution. It should be, I believe the church, people say the church is a hospital, but I don't, the problem with, I have with that is that everybody ain't sick and everybody can't be sick. It gotta be some nurses and doctors somewhere. So I don't believe the church is a hospital, but I do, I do believe the church should be a military base where the, they have a hospital on the base, but they're training you for warfare. They bring you up and they find out what you specialize in. If we had that, then we can separate people in the classes. And then we have to worry about people walking into a more mature class because they've already had their ABCs. They've already learned how to add so they can multiply. So now when you walk into classes like what me and you have, you are a seventh grader or eighth grader and you've already had that. But because we don't have a curriculum, that's a problem. And the other problem is, is that the other camps are already teaching. They're already teaching. It's already out there on Facebook. The average Christian is watching Facebook more than he's watching his preacher on, on, on the website. So he's going through other people. So their teaching is already being exposed. Now, And it's always have been. Our people learn, our young people, the millennium, they learn more from their music. They look at hip hop as their pastors, as their church. They look at hip hop as everything. They look for hip hop, for their clothes, for their for their uh, technology, for their information, for their spirituality. And so when they're already listening to people like Lil Wayne, KRS-One, how far you go back, 
uh, Professor Griff, so they're already listening. So you can't come and tell me that you can't tell them certain things when they already heard certain things about the moons and the stars from the song they've been listening to all day, every morning. They've been listening to Nas. Nas is a very heavy rapper. So you can't give them a Nas in the world and then give them a, a novice in the church. It's not going to match. And so when they listen to people like Nas, they listen to Jay-Z, to the J, to the E, to the Jehovah, they're listening to a lot of things. And so we have to now broaden that class and open it up to everybody and control it with love and have teachers who can discern where that individual is. This is why we need questions and answers because I can bring you to a place even though you haven't been there when you walked in the class. I'm skillful enough to how to walk you in and give you advanced classes to move you up to where you need to come back against what you're already listening to. But you can't reject them when they already listen to these things in their in their music. They already listen to these things. They already uh, dealing with Jamaica. They already smoking weed. They already on the block. They already in the neighborhood. They already know about bloods and crimps. And they already know about Freemasonry. Their father was a Freemasonry. And then you're going to tell me I can't invite them in unless they go to theology college. What they've already heard from their music, tell them don't go to anything that has anything to do with seminary. That's already been canceled out in their mind. The only reason why they're embracing us, because we sound like we understand them. But if we didn't sound like we understand them, they wouldn't have gave us a chance too. So you got to realize they're not going to give theology a chance. They don't even believe in that nonsense. So that's real talk. And then we got to be honest, for those who said, I went to uh, theology college and I got it, why didn't you tell it? Why did you go to school and get the truth, but never told the truth until we come up and tell it? Now you tell me you already know this? What's the purpose of going if I can't tell nobody the truth? What's the purpose of knowing about these books, but I can't tell nobody I know? And so the young people, they're not going for that. They don't want anything that don't work. That's why they don't want church, because they say it don't work. I'd rather sell rocks and almost go to jail or go to jail. At least I made some money in the mean. At least I can see some evidence of this life. We have no evidence. So the real talk is until we get back to a curriculum, until we bring back training facilities, and because we are so behind, we got to be skillful to know how to bring advanced classes and walk them up because they already listening to it. They already watch it. They telling the church about videos the church never watched. They telling you, well, go listen to this guy. Go listen to this guy. They telling us about books we never read. So we can't close them out. No, we can't do it. And then we definitely don't want to have book reviews because we call Dr. Ben and them, them books the devil. We have to, the, the reason that it's important, especially dealing with the wisdom and how to set up curriculum, how to set up classes and things are online now. Yeah. The thing that's important is we got we to gotta know that there's professors out here that's daily bashing our kids, daily right. bashing the young adults about, about religion, about spirituality, about the history of Christianity and Christianity and slavery. And there's a lot of young people that go and they, they, uh, there's a large number of young people that go away to college and they're turned off because of what they heard from their professors. And the professors feel it's their job to bang on the religion, to bang on the myth, to bang on the history of the gospel, to bang on the history of the Bible, to bring them to higher consciousness. They're right. talking, Nas and them talking theology. J or, or Jay Z and them talking a the theology. They, yeah. Beyonce is talking a spirituality. Don't get it twisted. We got this whole thing so confused and being that some of our, and what was that? What was the thing that was on last night? Somebody was watching that TV show last night with Lady Gaga and all of them, some type of awards or whatever. These people are coming and we're seeing them having symbols. I right. see I see on the news this morning, oh, she had a horns mask on her face and I'm looking, I'm saying, we're seeing horns everywhere. We're right. seeing eyes everywhere and I'm in the hood and I see the guys on the corner. They got pyramids on the t-shirt. I'm looking, I'm saying, and with an all seeing eye, I'm saying there's a lot of stuff that's out here. The spirituality is out here. The higher religion is out here. They're teaching some things. And we're going to talk about how when we even deal with the Protestant church and the whole Reformation, how Freemasonry was moving inside of there. And they said, this is the true spirituality. This is the true light that have light lit every man. The true religion before Christianity and dogma came. So a lot of those people like Anderson that wrote Anderson Constitution for Freemasonry, Anderson, when he came on the scene, they was like, listen, this is just a true, true religion. And they joined it with the church and they right. joined the degrees with the church and they say yeah it comes from here and the freemasons from there in europe during the renaissance period they did the same thing a lot of these young people are doing there they just put the spirit out there i'm gonna pull that other book up and they said listen the best thing to do is the true religion 
The true religion we can find everywhere. We're going to take bits and pieces. So it's a small mm -hmm. board. So it's open dining. You got crab legs over there. You got some salmon over here. You got some broccoli over here. Go around the buffet table and grab some. You could grab some of that yoga over there. Come over here and grab some of this reincarnation. This higher self right here. Mm -hmm. Grab some. And we grab a little bit of everything. That's good. So, so the Freemasons told the cult, they did it and they brought it in the church. And a lot of them were the pastors studying the other things because they said it's good. It's good in all religions. There's some good in all religions. Take what you want out of these religions. And the pro a lot of Protestant pastors been doing that. So now everybody's doing it. But we're sitting back now saying, what's wrong with these young people? And they're saying, what's wrong with being eclectic? I like some of what Farrakhan said and some of that Yaku, that big head theory. Then I like some of this over here with the Catholic Church that you got to have the signs and the symbols and understand certain things then i like some of what these israelites like to talk about because nationality is important so we right. all over the world what are we going to do with this right here how are we going to have a bible study that's not a part of gender that's not in depth that's going to straighten out some of the stuff it's right. hard it's easier to straighten it out before the mess come on the scene it's easier to build a brand new house opposed to gutting in a whole a whole warehouse we're going to get in here we need 20 30 yard dumpsters to gut the whole warehouse and throw all the garbage out then we coming in with new plumbing right. then we coming in with sheetrock and electrical work as right. opposed to just moving a few trees and just building something brand new off the ground come on sir that's real talk man man that's good that's true you know i remember you know we we give respect to the family of uh brother chapman you know he just passed from black panther and uh, i remember when black panther first came out and uh you know wonderful movie but uh, most of the people were talking about the entertainment of it, but only heard one person address the culture and the different spiritualities and religion that came from a movie. And guess what that was? That was KRS One. KRS One got on and he talked about he was able to recognize the clothing and he was able to recognize the different tribes and he was able to give a knowledge from Black Panther that was not entertaining. Why can't the preachers do that? Now this is this is why false lights are easy to come in and this is why we infiltrate it because we're watching things but we have no clue of what we're watching and because we're being entertained by it we're also being we're also being infiltrated by it and so I thank God for Kara as one that he was exposing some things but we need some men of God that can be able to say that and this is something God had let me and I have to be obedient to that we need to teach on movies we need to teach on matrix and the yeah. negative and the positive of the movie and these movies because a lot of the stuff that we're believing the infiltration it's not just in church in the dance in the role it is through what we watching on TV and movies that are desensitizing us to open up different cultures and you have no you have no awareness now it's the average preacher could not even match the level of depth that Carol S was one because he did research so he was able to say that came from this tribe and he was able to say this is the problem I have with the movie because they infiltrated this and that's really not the truth of their culture he was able to defend some things because he knew the truth about it we don't know the truth about our history the truth about spirituality to be able to defend what it is being infiltrated or what is being missed uh, a misrepresentation of it. I listened to a lot of even with, with the, uh, with, when Wild and I was going on, you know, and Nick Cannon, and a lot of things that he was saying and he was explaining. If you didn't know the truth about it, you couldn't either follow him or even agree with him or disagree because you was not aware. There are too many things that are on the table now that this is the first time we see it. We got to know some things. And so this teaching is so important and be able to teach. Let me show you how you're being infiltrated. Let me show you what the real intent of that movie and what it does and how it desensitize you and tear down walls and you open yourself up to different culture. It's the same thing with Beyonce and the dancing. People don't realize what's going on. You don't understand tribes. You don't understand that. We say we dance in church, but do we know how many different dances are in the Bible and how many dances were spiritual and not spiritual? But we love to say David danced, danced, David danced out his clothes. What dance was that? See, there's over 26 Hebrew words for the word dance. And do you know the tribune dance? And so you may think you're doing something. You know, I'm just dancing. I'm having a good time. Or I'm watching Beyonce dancing. And there's a whole lot of seances that's going on. I listened to an a, a interview uh, two days ago about this guy who was exposing Black Lives Matter. And he had the audio recording of the young lady who said when they say certain names that they're chanting and they're calling spirits down. Is that Hamilton? Is that the guy's name, Hamilton? Right, Hamilton, right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and so there's a lot of things that's going on. Now, I'm listening to it. I'm saying, you know, we got to do our homework. I'm not saying he's right, he's wrong, but based upon the information that he revealed, this is something now. Can the Holy Ghost tell us that, or do we need Hamilton to do? Because a lot of things the Holy Ghost has been trying to tell us, but we don't believe in the Holy Ghost. We don't listen to the Holy Ghost. So now we need information to expose it. When something should grieve your spirit, some things automatically, when you see them, it should be a grieving in your spirit. Something's not right with that. I don't, I don't know, because we don't know at all. No, nobody have all the history or all the information, but there should be a spirit of truth in you that be able to say something's not right with that, that moves you to study it. I heard you say yesterday, which I was so powerful. You said there's a lot of things that when you first got in, you was just saved. But as you grew, you read books about it. The Holy Ghost will lead you to a book. It will lead you to the library. That part. So you can't be afraid of that. It will lead you to understand things because God ain't going to tell you something that's, that's going to go against the book. So if he's speaking to you outside of the book, he's going to refer you back to the book. Everything in the book was, was a reflection of who Christ. I'm the volume of the book. I'm the scriptures. In the beginning was the word, and the word was me. So he's all three, but that's very key. But when we don't have this teaching, and do we have anybody teaching us to be able to say from the pulpit, let me tell you, all those who love Beyonce, let me show you. Did you see her last video? Did you see her last movie? Let me show you where this spirit comes from. Biblically, let me show you that. We need that type of teaching. Not get up, turn around, place your feet on solid ground, turn around, touch your neighbor three times. Oh, that day is over. Long we gone. Understanding of how to combat, because you can't fight against spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness. If you don't have on the armor of God, Put on the armor of God. The armor of God is symbolic of God. The helmet of salvation, that's God. The feet, the preparation, the loins of truth, that's God. He, all of those elements are minds of God or pieces of God that we put on mentally to fight against these things. But we walking around, and the Bible says above all, the shield of faith, above all, the helmet, the feet, we don't even know how to have the shield of faith, because why faith? Faith is the access into the unseen world. And if you don't know how to tap into that unseen world by faith there's a whole lot of stuff there it's a whole lot of stuff flying around and we are not sitting we put we need real ambassadors real defenders of the faith it says i'm not gonna let every tv come in your home and i say you'll remember my church and not make you be aware of what's coming in your house through this, through nursery rhymes through music through media through fashion through clothes it's coming in and we have to and we have to let the parents be aware because a lot of times parents don't know spirits. So you don't know half the parents don't know what their kids bringing in the house. Not mm -hmm. not just not just in their book bag, not just physically, but spiritually, what they're looking at in their room, what they're pulling up on their Ooh. phones, what they're pulling, what we've seen on these all these came. Listen, whole time, all this stuff, the devil been crept all in with all these thousand cable channels. With all this stuff coming here, 99% of the stuff is ungodly. Two, a couple of things we have to do. We have to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. We have to admit and we have to teach the people when we're dancing. The majority of dancing back in the days had to do with conjuring. When they dance, they're calling on the spirit, the rain god. You dance for spirit. You dance to bring it up. You dance to make things happen. You dance to set an atmosphere. You dance for change. So people dance. Sometimes they'll dance in a wedding for enjoyment. And weddings were spiritually too. Were spiritual too. If a man or leave his mother and father, that he need to cleave this wife and the two become one spiritually spiritually weddings were were all um, considered spiritual things so people danced then outside of that people danced the majority of the time back in the days for spiritual conjuring Right. We danced before all of these books were here. We were dancing and it was for, for rain to come, for crops to come, for some type of thing we did. So we got to explain these things to individual people, where this stuff is coming from, how we got this stuff. And that's why we say discernment is important. One of the reasons that Apostle and I are sharing this stuff is that you have to understand when the Spirit of God speaks, God's not wasting any energy. A lot of times you're going through something or I'm going through something. I went through what I went through so I can help people today. Right. Apostle, when right. he went through what he went through, so he can help people today. A lot of times we think when the Spirit of God is on, um, don't deposit something in us, if he don't let us know, we're explaining that God will send you to research a thing and he'll have some books, he'll have some teachings, he'll have somebody out there that already been through that. So right. if you're prayerfully seeking the wisdom and instructions of God, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. He'll lead you to books. He'll lead you to teachers that'll right. help you in 
a specific area. That's how come we think it's so dangerous only to have one shepherd. There right. are other teachers out there. Like I said, when you go to class, you don't, you ain't grown folk in college sitting in eight hours in one class. No, you go to different teachers that are professionals in different areas to help you in biology. The person that's helping you biology isn't helping you in political science. And then you break off into where your ministry, where your calling is, and then you get more instructions in, let's say, the prophetic or whatever God has called you to do, right. apologetics or whatever God has called you to do, pastoral right. care, whatever he's called you to do, he'll lead you in that. And we have to learn to home into our craft spiritually because right. we understand all of this stuff from the natural. We understand, well, listen, I'm going to study for A, C, and D. I need to do an intern here. I need to do, we know so much of what to do in the natural, but we don't understand that Christ often spoke in parables because just like it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. We need to be mentored. We need to be mentored. We need to move on in the things of God. Come on, brother. And this is so key. And we have to understand those stages. And it's real. Like I said, we wouldn't, we wouldn't accept it in the natural. You're not going to have your baby sitting in first grade. And he's 27 years old. You have a problem with that. We should have a problem with that with the church. But we have to reestablish everything. We have to gut it out and reestablish everything so we can make sure there's no cat. A lot of times people have a long case because... That's the train. You have a law case because let's say there was something in the building when you was working in the building, a, a, what is called a best style, I think, like that. And they'll say, okay, if you have a best style, you have a case. Well, how many of us in working in buildings has been toxic? We have to be honest with that. And most of the time, the Bible says, and all that getting, get an understanding. If it costs you all, the Bible says, if you have to lose your house, your car, get a understanding. Wisdom is the principal things, but in all that getting, get an understanding. We, we have to be honest. We don't have a real understanding of dancing. We don't have a real understanding of shouting. We don't have a real understanding of tongues. We don't have a, we don't even have a real understanding of what church is. We still think church is a building. There's a whole lot of things that we don't have a real understanding of. We don't have a real understanding of what worship is. We don't have a real understanding of praise. We don't have a real understanding of God. And so we have to have that. Matter of fact, the, the, the very beginning of the church is based upon revelation. Upon this revelation, I'm going to build my church. What is God building? He's building a people based upon revealing who he was. Who do you say that I am? Identity is the very first piece. You have to know who you are. The very first thing that God says in them is that I made you in my image and in my likeness. God starts with identity. We are still struggling with identity. You see, and so we have to say we are black Christian. I'm not a black Christian. Why well, gotta add color to who I am in Christ when God is a spirit and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and truth? Do that mean that we ignore uh, the problems that seem to go to the black man? No, kingdom agenda will address all problems. If we are doing the kingdom work, it will address black problems, white problems, Hispanic, because it's gonna deal with the spirit of it. It's gonna deal with the spirit of hate, the spirit of murder, the spirit of racism. It's gonna deal with all. Oh, not racism black on black or white on black. It's going to be with racism in every area. But we have to get to the identity in Christ, the mind of Christ. Even after you got saved, you still must have the mind of Christ. Why do you need the mind of Christ and you saved? Because you're not effective in the earth. And as Brother Berea said, many of us have been busy, but you ain't been effective. It don't matter if you've been doing good work, if you ain't been doing the right work. No matter if you've been doing good work, if you've been doing the right work, we got to do what's required, see? And so this is so important. But we got to get back to teaching and explaining. And we, and we got to be able, watch this, we got to be able to defend the faith as well as define the faith. That's the difference between theology and apologetics. And so many times we want to know how something is defined, but we don't know how to defend it. But you can't defend what you don't know. How are you going to defend something you don't know? So we got to get back to that and really spending time with God, coming to know him because the truth is in him. And I'm telling you this, I have not read all the books. One of the things that I do to keep me humble, and I say this every time I go to the library and I have a library card, every city I've ever lived in, I've lived in a lot of cities. I always get me a library card. I love books, always have. And even when I go to the thrift store, I go to the book section. Do you know what humbles me every time I look at a book section? I said, do I know any of these books? So I can never think that I know it all because you know how many books I've never read. If you go to any place where they have books at, then 90% of those books you have never read. It's so much out there. 
Okay, and so we gotta realize it. So I can't count on how much reading, but I can count on the truth of the Holy Spirit who knows all things that will bring things back to my remembrance. And so discernment is important because I can't catch up with time and all the things that's out there. So between my search in truth for, for searching books and teachers, at the same time, the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding me so I can be able to bring clarity in things that are putting us in bondage. Slavery is real. Persecution is real. Bondage is real. Racism is real. Witchcraft is real. What if I'm under all these things, but the label says God, the label says church, but what if the practice doesn't match with the label? Okay, I can be deceived. This is very key. Oh my goodness, that's that's important right there. And we're seeing that right now with the deep state. We're seeing that with with with, with, with white supremacy just disguised itself as Christianity and calling itself as Christianity, but on the lowest supremacy. And we're having right. a problem like that with that. And there's a whole, there's a great backlash. So everybody's right. online talking about give the white man back his book and all of this stuff because a lot of history hasn't been been taught and some things are being exposed. Right. Some things, plain and simple, some things are being exposed. We listen to look at this on the screen. Berean and Mr. Jenkins, um, Mr. Jenkins, apostle, who are the church fathers that Roman, that the black Roman Catholic Luciferian, um, what's that Christians follow? I guess that's Christians right there. When we start, I think a lot of Sean, do me a favor before I answer that. When was the um Roman Catholic Church started? Don't tell me, Peter. What year was the Roman Catholic Church started? Because we got the Roman Catholic Church and we have the Catholic Church, universal believers from the Book of Acts, the assembly, everybody that believed on Messiah. And when we start talking about church fathers, I think the timelines are little people, a lot of people have confused. Because if we look at the doctrines of the church fathers, Rich right. says that the church fathers and, and them, we can we can show and prove that they continued in the apostles' doctrine. Right. The church fathers was talking this book. Now when, now, when the mother folk came on the scene later on, that's a whole nother story when we start having the office of the Pope. What year did the office of the Pope come about? How did the Roman office, the, because they, we had bishops in Antioch, we had bishops in Alexandria, we had bishops in Rome, and as time went on, the bishop in Rome started getting more attention and more attention and more attention. So the bishop in Rome, that office turned into the pontifice. That office turned into the office of the Pope. So he was the Pope above all popes. Like we got the king of kings, he was the pope, he was the pope, he, he was the bishop above all other bishops, and that's how the office developed. But we had church fathers way before that, even 1054 with the great schism, we had church fathers way before that. And we got the church fathers split. We got the apostolic fathers, those that were connected to John very, very early right. in the beginning. And then later on, we had the, or early the anti nicene fathers. And we had those that came later on after the fourth century. But they're, all of them is way before the, um, the Pope. All of them way before Rome, the devil worship came in. Now, the devil worship came in. Right. The paganism came in. They're going to argue that it didn't. But all the show us came in. But that came in hundreds of years later. We had a whole bunch of people when church fathers were writing, we would have a Diocletian in them. We had people that were dying for the faith. Right. And there were church fathers writing back then. That was an early pure messianic movement. Right. They ain't had no cross, they ain't had no egg, they ain't had no bunny, they ain't had no Halloween, they had none of that madness. That right. was the early church. That was the movement of Messiah. Messiah, that was the movement of the Messiah in the very, very beginning. And that was the Catholic Church. Now, the Roman Catholic Church is a whole different story. They came way later on when they seen they kept killing people and killing people and killing people. And the doctrine is still spreading. They said the best thing to do is to take it over. And that's where the bootleg came in. And we have the bootleg until this very same, till this very day. And now people are confused with the bootleg and what's pure. It's hard to tell. You can't right. tell. You go in the hood. These girls got pocketbooks. It's hard to tell. Every building got a church on it. It's hard to tell. What's right. real? What's bootleg? Now, some people walk away altogether from everything because there's so much bootleg out here. But if you run across a couple and in the hood, we used to do that. If you run across a couple of, 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 of counterfeit $20 bills, that's going to mean you're going to throw all your money away. You're right. going to be careful and be like, I'm going to only go to the bank or the check cash your place because right. we know most likely they're plugged in with the feds and they know what the real money is. But you ain't going right. to say, you, I'm going to just stop. I ain't dealing with money no more at all. No, not just planning a few counterfeit bills. Come on, Apostle, if you want to speak on that. Yeah, and I, you know, it's so important. And I was, it's so, I'm glad this person asked this question, Sean, because I was going to get with you. I think it's important to teach on the timelines 
not only the timelines when things got started, but when things were when things were introduced to us. Because a lot of times, like most people don't know, and this, and, and I would say this. Sometimes in the class that we're teaching, you gotta have a mind to be able to hold this level of information because it it it, it, it takes a it takes a while to understand this information. And so what I mean by that is most people don't know before the Roman Catholic came in, what was before them. Then you say before the, when the Catholic came in, what was before that? Then then before you had that, you had the Greeks. Before Greeks came in, what was before that? And most time we, we're not able to go back to say that this was introduced that this. Uh, philosophy came from this set of people. And so we can't be able to measure that. And so most of the time, people will go back to Constantine or they'll go back to the anti fathers. And so, well, how far do they go back? Okay. And so you got to know about the time that when was Catholic religion even got started? Who started it? Okay. And so you got to go all the way back and then trace it. Now, what makes it sometimes difficult because there's a lot of information because you're dealing with Northern Kingdom, Southern yeah. Kingdom, mm -hmm. Western. And so when you deal with all the different kingdoms, even in the Bible, most of the stuff we teach, we teach from a culture that's from the Western culture. And so when you deal with Eastern culture, come in. And so it's a whole different, a whole different information, whole different uh, theology from the Eastern versus the Western. And so there's a whole lot of stuff. And so a lot of times a camp will build on a certain, in other words, certain camps will deal with things that come from this. And they'll never go over to this. And so they'll believe that's where it got started. And that's where we get messed up. That's even in church. You got to know when did they start teaching baptism? of the Holy Ghost versus baptized in water. When did it start happen? Until John. Well, prior to John, when was the first disciples? Because Jesus didn't start disciples. John already had disciples. And so you have to understand that. And that's the same thing with church fathers. How far do we go back? And most of the time, we pick up where it's already poison. We don't go back to the pure place because we don't go back. And so we believe that it's a white man's book, not because it's truth, but because your research may be limited to a certain area or only went to a certain only went back to a certain far. It's like in music, somebody said, Well, well, where did uh gospel come from? Some of the gospel came out of blues. Well, where did blues come from? So, what's the first original music to determine how it traveled? But not only how it traveled, but when were certain things introduced? This will you have apologetics because they'll say, When did we start preaching that gospel? When did that become a part of the gospel? Did we always preach that? Did we always believe that? And so this is where now this is going to be exposure because you may find out that your religion have picked up something that the original fathers did not preach. They did not preach that. They did not do that. They did not continue. Why the word continue in the apostles' doctrine? So what is the apostles' doctrine? What was it? The doctrine of Christ? Well, okay. What was the doctrine of Christ? See what I'm saying? So this is why, then the Bible will start making sense to you. This is why Jesus had to say, repent for the kingdom. He was introducing another mindset. So this is why we have from chapter 5 of Matthew to chapter 8, it's all in red, because Jesus is reiterating a kingdom message. He says, so you have said I for I, but I say you. He's bringing what was in the old, and he's showing you how it has transitioned and how it shifted. Most time we don't know the shift to understand fathers. So, so it's easy to say the white man gave you the book because you don't know the shift. You don't know timelines. And that you have to know even in the world. Right now, if I wrote a book and I can say to some people, when did microwaves come into existence? Because my great grandmother didn't have a microwave. Amen. See? I may write in the book, the only way to cook something fast is using the microwave. Somebody say, well, that's not true. That was because in his time zone, he had microwaves. But my grandmother didn't have microwaves. When did iPhone 10s come into existence? When did we move from dial-up to be able to push buttons? See, when did Facebook was introduced? And what came along? When did not just Facebook, the date that it started, but when did certain things come through Facebook that we never got exposed to, but because of Facebook? Because in all of these religion, it didn't just start something, it also let something come through. It, it, it changes in concept. And so this is very important. This is why you got to do hist history understanding or do historical facts. And you got to understand timeline. And this is why certain things you can't change your belief. The minute you don't believe in Adam and Eve, you open up a whole new cyclopedia to a level of belief systems. Because if you don't believe in Adam and Eve, you know, they're not the original man and who's the original man. Or if that's not the first book, 
You're going to run into problems. This is the kind of stuff they teach in theology, but they don't want to tell you. They'll tell you in theology that Genesis is not the oldest writing. They'll mm -hmm. tell you that Job is. Well, if Job mm -hmm. is the oldest writing, then who was first, Job or Adam? So mm -hmm. there's a whole, it's, and not that we have to say that Job was first, but it's going to bring some questions that make us research some things. It would honor, because we don't have an answer. These two scriptures don't look like they make sense. And this is what makes you do research. OK, and you got to do that to answer that question. And that's and that's why we're supposed to do research. But you see um, that we have something right here. King Constantine had a vision and kind of where the waters get muddy is because a lot of people in church never heard of Constantine, never heard of the Nazi Council until right. YouTube. They didn't hear of it until Phil Valentine. They didn't hear of it right. until the Da Vinci Code. And because they started introducing it and they started spreading it around fast, there is a level of confusion. A lot of people that Menevlian bridge, somebody put the name of that bridge in. Parker, put the name of that bridge in Constantine when they were going to fight. Constantine had a vision and he saw a cross. Now we got to ask questions. And, and he saw a cross and it says, and, and the vision, the cross, there was a sign in Latin says, in this you shall conquer. Now that's interested in this sign you shall conquer. Was that the sign of the messianic movement? Was that the sign of the movement of the apostles? Was that sign connected with the doctrines of the apostles? When we say they continued in the doctrine in the apostles' doctrine, people want to argue was Constantine a Christian or not? We got the only thing we got to do is look at the fruits. Right. So we got to be some fruit inspector running around here. We, oh yeah, Constantine was a great God used him. Well, God, listen, God used the devil. God used who he wanted to use. What does that mean? And this is where some confusion comes. So people want to lift up Constantine. Oh, of course he's going to be in heaven. That's that's God's man, like Donald Trump. Like they lifted up Donald Trump. He's the anointed one. But how many of y'all know God could use Nebuchadnezzar? God will use anybody. God will use the Pharaoh. God will use who he want to use. Right. God's the boss. He'll do what he want to do. But when we start putting labels like Constantine was a holy man, we got to understand everything that happened with that vision and what happened later on they started that's the beginning of the smorgasbord that's right. the beginning now he didn't force christianity on everybody but in 313 he made it not a legalist and we ain't gonna kill christians no more because prior to that off and on they were killing christians and they were taking the homes of christians they were feeding christians to the lions off and on they were going through persecutions from since the 30s the late 30s from the beginning of the messianic period and that's where kind of the problem came in because other people they had already the holidays and things that they acknowledged and now this movement that they call this messianic movement that they later on started calling christianity now it's getting some shine now it starts getting some shine now it's popular to be a bishop so now people fighting for the office of the bishop because it's a popular thing. When they were being persecuted, it was a whole different story. But now it's being popular. Everybody's a Christian today. But when, it become, when, when they're going to start charging y'all with felonies for becoming a Christian, when they won't give y'all food and medicine, then we're going to see who really believe on the Lord. Then we're going to see. Thank you, Parker. That's what it is right there. The Melivian Bridge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and and so these are things that we got to know and we got to understand. But at the same time, like I said, a lot of people, they only heard about Constantine team through the Da Vinci Code and stuff like that. So automatically that's supposed to be, that's how I got the young ministers, the youth ministers. I'm telling you, automatically that got to get thrown into the Sunday school lessons. Automatically that got to come up. So these questions could be answered, but like someone said earlier, we're so far behind. God, Apostle, I'm 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 gonna pull up some of these comments. I was going to post some of these comments okay. so people even watching the video later on can see some stuff. Okay, and I'll tell you, like, dude, when you do that history, like, understand all of it. Like with Constantine, you gotta realize when they had these kings back in the day, uh, there was about controlling the masses of the minds. And that's what it was about. And so it was about murdering people, uh, taking land. Uh, even when you deal with Jezebel, when Ahab told his wife that he wanted this land, she had that man killed so he could have that land. That was very common in that time to have that. And there's a lot of things that's been introduced to us with a wicked intent. But Christianity was the way to deceive the people because people always looked at God as their help. So you have to realize that even when you deal with marriages, you know, one of the reasons why we have to get a marriage certificate to be married is because these kings were sleeping with all these women. And when they died, they didn't know who had heir to the throne. So they come up with these pieces of paper to be able to say that we'll be able to legally do it so we can know who to give the property to. And so there's a lot of things that we may spiritually 
spiritual that didn't start it out spiritual. The intent of it wasn't a spiritual. And that you got to understand too, because there's a lot of wicked people that took on Christianity or took on that religion for another reason. It's the same thing with why did we set the slaves free? It wasn't about setting them free, about saving the union. But we don't know the real truth about things, and you need to know the whole story behind it. So you won't be so quick to put God's name on everything and believe it was a uh, it was a move of God. When even though we know at the end God has an ultimate plan and He allows things to happen, but to say that was God's intent, the problem is is when you see things that are perverted, but you make them the heart of God. You got to know the difference between the move of God and the heart of God. And there's a difference because a lot of things we know that all things work together for good, but we can't. We can't say because all things work together for good that rape was God's intent. Mm -hmm. Even though He can use your your situation from you being raped, and you can become a powerful testimony, mm -hmm. God can we can deliver you and heal you from that emotional what you experienced. But that don't mean that God was pleased when the person was raping you. And that's the same thing. There's a lot of things that work together for the good, but that don't mean that was God's original intent. That means He can use whatever you give Him or whatever choice you make, and He can turn it around. But a lot of times we want to put the move of God and make it the heart of God. That's what we do with the letter. And so the letter kills because you got to know the intent of it, the intent of it, the heart of God. That's, that's why he said, I got to write it upon their hearts that they would not sin against God. But many times we do history, we're not looking at the heart. So we quick to say Constantine was a man of God. No, that was just a move of God that God wow. was doing. That's very key. And this is another thing. Says so some good stuff is coming out, and dude, this is honest questions that I get on the on the regular all the time. As a believer, you just can't have people have statements like this and not address these statements. Right, Church, right. So we got to address these statements. He said, "I still don't understand how how much bloodshed come from a holy doctrine if that religion is the pure religion of Christ. If that's the pure religion." How can it have so much bloodshed? I gotta go to timelines because we're detectives of doctrine and we look at history. When the bloodshed start among people that's leaders that can consider themselves Christians? When did Christianity come into authority politically? First of all, once most religions get involved in politics and everything, it done going downhill. They done ran them up. That's how can I watch all these churches that's bringing around election time, bringing these senators and councilmen and all these folk in here. I watch them with my two good eyes. But look at this. How much bloodshed? How could it be bloodshed? Was that the true religion? Was it already hijacked? Is that the counterfeit? Is that the deep state? Because by the time what we call Christianity received political power, we could, we could say there was already pagan elements in the church. It was already wickedness in the church. So people are riding off of the name. People are riding off of that name and that movement, but wicked people are in control of it. And they're running with the kings, the kings and the popes and the rulers of Europe are running together, spreading this religion. So automatically when there's full, when people have full power, it's almost because of the nature of man's heart. And right. like, like I said, once again, titles mean nothing. If somebody say they believe a big deal. If somebody say they a bishop, big deal. What that mean? We let our guards down when people start using religious titles, and this is the problem. So the bloodshed, the bloodshed among Christians came in on the set, quote unquote Christians with certain things like the Crusades, and people don't want to get the Crusades confused. The Crusades came after Muhammad Ibn Abdullah was born, and Islam started spreading. When Islam started spreading, they spread to Jerusalem and Islam because they like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and 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 Job, and these are. These are prophets and patriarchs that's spoken about in Quran and Hadith. And they're spoken about there, they're spoken about holy sites. So holy sites that are in Jerusalem are equally important to people in Islam because they're part of the Abrahamic faiths. Now, being that they're part of the Abrahamic faiths and the Muslims started growing and getting stronger, they went and took over Jerusalem. So the Crusades came about in 1090, 1090, um, 1099 to begin to start fighting back to take over those different shrines, those different Jerusalem and the temple and those different holy places that the Bible says that different people, Jesus and Abraham and different people were. So the Muslims wanted to take it over because it was equally important to them and they were strong. You have to understand when we start dealing with Muhammad, Muhammad, all the tribes were warring and the tribes were already going around robbing and stealing. 
Right. Ali Baba and the 40 Thieves. I'm just throwing this out there, but this is later on stuff. They were already warring and 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 and, see, and robbing people and just right. going around and looting caravans and everything. So by the time Muhammad came with this new religion, this one religion that they say oh, Allah is the way, and they started following this God, he went, he cleaned out the 365 gods in the Kaaba and Mecca, and they started spreading around and they kept spreading, doing their own thing, killing and robbing and taking wives and robbing. So robbers were already on the scene, but it turned around and they started justifying it in the name of religion and they started calling it the booty you got to get the booty you got to get the loot so we go in that town we deck them women we rape them women we make them our wives and we kill the men up and we're gonna take all their jewelry so that thing was already going on before muhammad came on the scene europeans were already robbing they were already raping and ruling lands before christianity came on the scene and they just started using the term christianity years after messiah they started doing that and they started robbing in the name of that so the Crusades was just Muslims and Christians fighting. Then later on, you had the Inquisitions. This is why history has to be taught because robbing and raping came in there. Right. Well, yeah. behavior came in there, but it right. came in there hundreds of years later. So we right. can't connect the pure doctrine of Messiah, that Messianic movement, with what they were doing even during the Crusades. Christianity was already was already it was already deep state. It was already just a tool to control the masses and the name to rob and move and do what men were already doing. Come on, sir. And let me tell you, man, that was so powerful. And that's what I'm saying. That you, you explained that branch so well. And there's so many branches, like the question, you know, why is there so much bloodshed? Now, we can deal with that branch, but we can go back to Cain. The first time we see Cain, he kills his brother. That's bloodshed, right? We over religion. Cain. Over dealing with religion. Over religion. And this is the first time that we hear God acknowledging blood. He said, I can hear the blood of your brother crying out from the blood. For the blind, this is where it's over religion. You're dealing with Cain and Abel. You deal with Abel means breath, Cain means possessor. We want to possess certain things. You see the whole spirit of it, even in the Cain. Now, we see God deals with blood too. When they try to cover themselves with fig leaves, even though Cain killed Abel, why, well, since we know Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves with fig leaves, God sheds an animal to cover them as a blood covering. And so here, Christianity deals with blood covering when we deal with God. Now, why did he use blood? covering because something innocent must die for something that is guilty blood bible says life is in the blood so it's exchange for life it's exchange for a life that is innocent for a life that is guilty and so god is showing the sacrificial life of jesus christ which is the pivot verse in genesis chapter 3 verse 15. so we see blood even there we see blood on god's side but we also see blood on the demonic side murderer and so cain is a murderer from the beginning and so we see that so we see the spirit of murderer we see bloodshed and we see it all the way through and so we see the first even though this is something that we don't like to talk about we believe that the black man is the original man of the earth where well, the first black on black crime has something to do with cain and abel not the white man killing the black man with the black man killing the black man if we are the original people and so we see blood share there so we can tie it there but we see god dealing with blood but god didn't kill the people god killed the animal and it was a life as an exchange it was symbolic of christ giving us his life and taking on so he who knew no sin became sin so we can deal with blood on that but we see war and blood from the beginning of the bible we see that always have been and even america we don't want to talk about it we can pick on religion but america everything america have has come from murder or rob or steal we if you want to call the devil that he come to kill steal and destroy that sounds like america that don't sound like the devil that sounds like us that's what we have did we we have raped land we have where are the indians at you can't even find real true pure indians where they at see that's real talk so we have to deal with how much things we have robbed and stole but the real Purity of purity didn't start with the devil, it started with God. But the devil is a marker, so he takes the very thing that was supposed to be so innocent, life is in the blood. Now we have used that for killing and murder and robbing instead of using it for covering. It's supposed to be a sign of covering that I will lay my life down for my brother. What greater love than this? But we use it for everything else. So we're not using it to come together with our brother. We have used it to destroy our brothers and our sisters. And it's always been that has always come from the Cain mentality, which is the religious system that believes I will possess what I want to possess, even if I have to murder and kill it to get it. And that's the truth. And these are, and when we start dealing, like like the Bible says, let no man, um, let no man get you. Get, I'm freestyling it. Um, get you twisted with with philosophies of man. 
A lot of times we got to understand that's why the spirit of Black Lives Matter is at work. And that's why we see the spirit of anarchy running amok here in Portland and all of these different silly cities. They're using police killings, but they're using it for a different reason. Right. Freemasons back in the days, Benjamin Franklin and them, they were using terrorism. They were gangsters. The Boston Tea Party, them dudes were thinking, they was like, listen, we don't like the way things are going. We're going to overthrow the government. Some people said we can overthrow the government the way it is right now through Marxism. We can overthrow this thing. Now, now, now the simple people on the bottom that don't know how that the country was built off of terrorism. We came we got to kill an Indian. So a lot of what's going on now with killings and being against the police, they, they were against the they were against the taxation and everything that was in Europe. So George Washington was like, listen, we're going to either stick together or we're going to hang separately. We're going to die, but we're going to have to move. And they started moving in terrorism. They said, we're going to do our own thing and we know they're going to come. We're going to bust our gun. We're going to be free one way or like, yes, some people are going to die, but we're going we're gonna to tear this thing up. And we got a spirit right now that's still, that's, 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 um, that's been around in America. There's a right. spirit around us right now saying, listen, we finna tear this whole thing up. If we don't get it our way, if we don't change, if we don't overthrow this government, if we don't overthrow the system that's going on right now, listen, we just ain't gonna live. So it's gonna turn it. They're gonna use anything. They use a black and white. They're gonna use race. They're gonna use religion. They're gonna use whatever because right now there's a fight to, do, to overthrow the system, to change certain things around. But my problem is, are they lying to us? Because you gotta milk the people. George Washington, you got to milk the people on what's going on. They're trying to tax us. They're trying to do this. They're trying to do that. But they threw some fake news in there. Of course, back in the days, the the um the pamphlet was fake news. So right. that's when we got people like Payne and them, and they start talking about common sense and religion, and they started propagating certain little pamphlets. They were books, but because the printing press had already came on the scene, these were just little pamphlets that were spreading around, spread these to the bars, spread these to the churches, spread these to the farmers, and 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 if you they can't read, read it to them. Tell them what they try to do to us in England and they mixed some fake news in there because they wanted a movement. They wanted to do some stuff. So everything that's happening right now is happening so it could be an overthrow of the government. They say we want a new regime, but who's behind it? Anytime right. something jumping off, who's behind it? A right. lot of times it seems like it's for a good thing, but what's going to be the long-term outcome of this thing? And these right. are things that we got to look at. Somebody somebody else said, no, Constantine was a sun worshiper. That's why they do church on Sundays. Now, this is something popular that we hear. That's how come I said I got to stay with stream, y'all, because we can put it up. We ain't scared. We're going to put the stuff up. We're parked at. What are we going to do with this right here? And we get this from a lot of people. We get this from our Seven Day Adventist people. I get it from, oh, you know, you know Israel going to give us this because we ain't keeping the Sabbath. What, what, it's a whole different story. What does it mean to keep the Sabbath? Do, did Adam and Eve go to church on Saturday or did you just chill and think about Messiah? That's a whole other story. But Constantine was a sun worshiper. What did Constantine do? What did Constantine say when he started saying the clothes day? He wanted certain businesses and people to rest. First of all, we got to understand that there was a movement. Those people were against Israel and they wanted the, the, the church people later on. They wanted to separate themselves from the Jews. From the beginning, it was beef with Jews. It was beef with Israel because unbelieving Jews killed Messiah. And now Christianity, the religion of Messiah, quote unquote, the religion of Messiah is getting more popular. But remember, it's starting to take a turn. It's starting to take a turn towards paganism all during this time. But part of the problem is, if we look at Romans 16, part of the problem is the Bible says, and they continued in the temple daily. Folk was going to church all the time. So we'll give you all scriptures like let no man judge you by new moon and holy day and all of that other stuff. We'll give you some of that. We'll give you some Colossians. We'll give you some other yeah. things that we have a freedom in Christ. But the thing is, it, we have sources where believers getting together on Sundays to worship to collect offering, where they getting together on Sabbath, where they could, like, like I said, clearly the scripture said they got together every day until the temple was destroyed. Right. This is kind of where the problem is. So Constantine didn't make everybody stop going to church on Saturday and start going to church on Sunday. They were already acknowledging the Sunday because not that he rose when they got there on Sunday morning. He was already up at the tomb. So we ain't saying he rose up on Sunday, but he was already gone. The tomb was already already empty on Sunday morning. So we have evidence that people were already acknowledging having communion or what we would call the Eucharist and breaking bread and prayer, praying and worshiping Messiah in the beginning of that movement prior to Constantine. Right. 
prior to Constantine, but he ordered certain businesses to be closed. See, like, like people would call, I think we call it blue laws. He said certain businesses could be closed on Sunday. And then people started saying this was a turn. That's where a lot of people argue it became a turn for the worse. But prior to Constantine, we have evidence that people already gathered and, and was giving God praise on Sundays prior to him coming on the set. And this is why we have to approach it. When things are brought to us, you got to know the whole story because things that sound right uh, based upon the angle or the, or I, I would say the, the frequency, in, in other words, which station they on, they're going to be on 100.4. It'll sound right. But if you go to 100.5, you'll see that that's not totally accurate. And so that's one of those things because we don't want to deal with, did they go to church every day? How do God see uh, when John was in the spirit on the Lord's day? What day is that? And so is there a Lord's day? That's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So have to deal with that. Did God wait to Constantine come up with this day? Do we know the real history? Like you explained, most folks don't know the reason why he even introduced that again that's why i say when you deal with timelines you have to know what timeline something started and why was it introduced what was the motive behind it that's very key when we deal with stuff like that but then the other angle and this way truth is a 360 degree you have to deal with truth from all angles i believe mm -hmm. it Four corners of the earth to me is that represents truth from all from the north, from the west, the south, and the east. And those are all thoughts. So, like you have different thoughts that come from the west, different thoughts that come from the east. It's like music. You have west coast, you have east coast. There's a different west coast sound than there's an east coast sound. Mm -hmm. There's a different southern sound, there's a different sound. And so there's a different sound even when you deal with theology or philosophies. And so a lot of times people don't talk from all four corners. You build your truth on the west coast sound. And so you say east coast sound is wrong. No, that's a West Coast sound. Let's do all the sound. So when you look at even when it comes to Sunday and Monday, let's be honest, every day of the week is pagan. And so we can't just pick on the Sunday that it comes from, from the sun because Monday just with the moon. M Monday is the moon day. And so all those days have their reason. Uh, even when you deal with your month, January is called the two-headed God because it's, it's divided in December and all those things. We don't know the history, so we're not going to pick on. Now, most of the time, different cults will pick on certain days to take you to a certain place. They want to stop you from going to church on Sundays and prove if they can prove Sundays is wrong, then what else is wrong with your Bible? And what else is wrong with the church and what else is wrong it is to lead you to the truth that they're trying to bring you to and so we got to be able to deal with all of it to be truth the intent of your question and then and i'm going we shouldn't be upset about your question because we need that question that question because we got a lot of christians that you on sundays and you don't know why you do it on sundays and you don't do it every day and so a lot of things that come to you their intent could be for the wrong reason but you need to have that question we don't we don't trip when we have those questions because some of us you are on the right day and still doing it the wrong way wow come on come on and 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 we know traditionally we know traditionally like i said adam and eve we that's like we got to get back to the religion of noah we got to get that's like i'm gonna say history is important when we start getting to the religion of noah the religion of cain and abel the religion of adam and eve what what, what was the religion what were they what were the ken johnson got a book, good book in there on um, paganism ancient paganism and were people were people involved outside when we start dealing with israel the excuse the train outside of um israel the group and the religion of israel israel was surrounded that by people that were into ancient sun worship we got to admit that the church don't want to admit some stuff we don't want to admit we don't want to make damnable doctrines done came in we don't want to admit that and it came in through the catholic church and i'm going to tell the truth right now publicly i don't care if them thumbs them like it and apologists nobody can prove it they'll try to talk they a lot of people out here defending paganism a lot of people out here defended the whole time they defended the nonsense we can look that certain things were going on ancient sun worship was the greatest worship of john the bible that people had beef with and we see later on people had elements of it we might as well just keep it 100 when we go when we go way 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 back we see that people worship the sun or people acknowledge or venerated that's the word the ancient used people venerated the sun and that was a problem so we got to do some things so people would ask now like this question right here Barita, Mr. Jenkins, can a worshiper of Baal, any, any, when I say Baal, when I, when he, I use Baal, we're talking about anything pagan, be saved and sanctified in Jesus and receive salvation while continuing to worship Baal? Can you, can you unknowingly be involved in certain things? 
that, that, that this is some this is where this is where the beef coming because this is where that egg coming and them bunny is this is where all that other stuff coming in and and and, and the whole time Israel been terrorizing us with that and I start terrorizing the church because it's not Bible we don't right. need it if some people say it's not really ancient paganism but it's not biblical if it's not biblical let's just put it down for the sake of others we argue that we have a freedom in Christ but because we have a freedom in Christ because of what happened post Constantine because of what we see going on in the Catholic Church and even Lutherism, even Protestants, even when they pulled away, we have lights. We have other things. We can't say lighting candles by itself is pagan. Let me just bring up the candle thing first because in Israel, they had the menorah. Everybody got candles. One of the most prominent things or symbols dealing with man's soul and dealing with spirituality and divinity, and divinity is a candle. That don't mean you're a sun worshiper, but we like candles. We do certain things. In different regions and different places, a candle means something different. Uh, they would burn a candle in the Catholic Church. Israel would burn the menorah. They burn candles in, in Santeria in different, in different, and, and all, and, and so many states the world over, people would burn candles, and candles are symbolic of man's spirit, or flame, of flu, or like a, or, um, to fiery tongues on top of the apostles in Acts 2, and stuff like that. So we see things everywhere. We have to understand all of these things inside of their context but we i i i has to be one of the first to say confusion great great confusion has come in by way of rome rome babylon to me those things are synonymous because the ancient what nimrod and them did is what we see within the vatican and then a lot of us think that we were freed a lot of protestants think they're free because they pulled out you know protesting with martin luther and his 95 thesis in 1516 october 31st in wittenberg germany because he put up 95 things that the catholic church do that ain't bible and he wanted to get it on with them with debate he wanted to dialogue he didn't even want to start a whole movement he wanted to do what we're doing dialogue and to make sure that what we doing is inside the book. He ended up starting the whole what we would call, but it was even started before that, what we would call the whole Protestant movement that protesting against the church. But Protestants came and brought some stuff over with them. Renaissance period in them, they came and brought some stuff over with them because remember, even these people were studying masonry. They were studying the ancient occult, right? So they brought paganism with them too. And a lot of them were the priests, a lot of them were the leaders. So whole time pagan, whole time some other stuff been close with us. Remember, it was God, it was Adam and Eve, and it was God, then it was the serpent. There was other tradition. There was another wisdom that was using God's word for another purpose. Right. And that has always been around. So we got to keep it 100 with that. And to be honest, a lot of the church today don't want to fight against it because we have scriptures that say we have a freedom in Christ. So what difference does it make? Is this problematic for people that don't really know history? Or is it revealing that, that Christianity isn't as pure as we claim it is? Especially right. like I use the thing, the snowball effect coming down. Some stuff was just added to it. Right. Santa Claus, some stuff was just added to it. People in Saints were just added to it. So now we got what we what we got what we call Christianity today. So there's a lot of people that don't even want to use the term apostle. They don't want to use the term Christian. I'm a Christian. Some people, I forgot what the other girl said in the text last night. She was like, "Oh, a long time ago, I've been dropped that term because they're disgusted with the term, knowing the history and knowing some things that came down to it." Come on, sir. And I think that's the key, man. I mean, you brought up a very key point because I think we gotta we gotta look at it ho holistically. Uh, there are some things that are not pagan, but and even though we have freedom in Christ, this is what I ask people: when we're free in Christ, what are we free to do? Because we're not free to be free, and so we have to make sure that we understand that because freedom can make you think that you are independent, you'll be your own god. But the whole purpose of freedom was to serve God. We've been bought with a price, even those who are free. You've been bought with a price. And so you have to understand you don't belong to yourself. The first thing you do when you come into God is deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him. And so in walking in the light as he's in the light, there are some things that may not be a sin. Paul said all things are lawful but not expedient. But you got to know what's not expedient that will lead you back into the darkness. Paul said you start out in the spirit, you end up in the flesh. And so even when it comes to candlesticks, we can say candlesticks will end themselves, could be innocent, even though. But what makes me nervous, and this is this when it comes to the tree and anything else, I don't try to associate myself with anything that the devil wants to use to bring me back. Mm. So I'm very careful. I'm very comfortable with women use candlesticks, and here I'm a saint, and I got one. Now, I'm not saying the candlestick within itself, I'm saying it's innocent. But when he chooses to use that, I have to be very aware. This is why Paul says something that we must, we got to start embracing. I got to die daily that Christ may live. There's a daily death 
that I need to be aware that my flesh is looking to find a way to bring me back into. So the problem, this is the, the occasion of the flesh. Don't use it for the occasion of the flesh. So I have to be very careful of that. And so that's very key. So I don't mess with no Christmas trees, no bunny rabbits. You know, my wife likes candles and I pray a lot. And I understand she likes to smell the thing, but I'm also aware that the enemy would love to bring a frequency sublineal. He would love to bring underneath the radar any kind of way he can reach me. And so this is why I entitled it false lights because most of false lights come from things that are innocent that bring me to a carnal place that makes me reachable. So I have to be very careful when it makes me reachable. It's the same thing with comedy. I love to laugh, but comedy can bring me to a carnal place. So I'm very careful that I don't entertain anything that could that, that could bring a crack in the door. Because I, cause I, I know that the enemy's saying, you know, candlesticks is nice, but I'm trying to get you into demon worship. And I'm trying to get you there by deception. The devil ain't saying I want you to be a one my follower. He coming in deceiving. And his way to deceiving is to say, you can decide what you want. You can choose. You God now. That's what he's using. So I'm very careful with that. Now back to the question. Many people have given their life to God and they're still in the Baal worship. And they may not be Baal as in Buddha, but they can be Baal as in Church of God in Christ and Apostolic. So we can't say that people are not serving Baal once they've been saved because there's a lot of anti-Christ movement going on in our denominations and in our churches. So the question would be absolutely yes. But as the spirit moves in you, there is a moving away and you must you must kill the flesh and feed the spirit. As you grow, you're going to drop off things. You're going to come out of Egypt into the promised land. You're going to come out of darkness into the marvelous light. And so God don't need you to be right when he saved you. He saved you because you're not right. But there's a progression. The first Adam was fully grown, but the last Adam was a baby. There's a process to this. Jesus came as a baby to show us how to walk into it. So many of us have to walk into it. But we think only Baal worshipers are Buddha or something that is anti-Christian. But there's some Baal worshipers in the temple. Baal worshipers. There's some day gods in the temple. See what I'm saying? Uh, the, 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 when Moses went to the mountaintop, they called for Aaron to build the gods right there in the wilderness. Pharaoh wasn't there. Pharaoh was, had drowned. But they still built a god while they were free. And, yeah, they took the earrings, the future of the children, and built it. And guess who knew how to build it? Aaron, the high priest, he knew how to build a false god. I'd rather worship a god I can make than to serve a god that I can't make. Moses is serving the true living god. They down in the bottom. They got a sound that Moses says in his spirit. That sound don't sound right. They praising. They're praising though. They're worshiping. They dancing, but ain't the right sound. So the question would be absolutely. But as you move in the god, this is our sign. How do you know that you're saved when the war has begun? That's how you know. Amen. How you get saved is one thing, how you become saved. But how you know you saved is when the war, when when, when that old man and that new man, if that mindset is battling, and God is telling you, you got to let that go, you got to let this go, you got to let this go, you got to let that go. And so there's a lot of letting go. Now, the problem is many people do not ever walk into their promised land. They Amen. die in the wilderness still serving idol gods, even though they've been freed by God. Very key. Very key. Good stuff right there. All right, we're going to read this one. And how long will we get? One hour and a half. And, and, and I'm sorry, because some people are like, yeah, y'all be going and I have to watch it in pieces. It's okay to watch in pieces because yeah. it's so funny that when we start dealing with cults, we call camps cults and stuff like that. Yeah. We say the camps are a cult because they use the Bible and look like Bible believers, but we claim it's not believers. We claim they're racist. So when we start talking about camps and stuff like that, you can say what you want almost every single camp. They teach for hours with no problem. Jehovah witnesses teaching for hours. Mormons, they sitting there teaching for hours with no problem. A lot of us, we're just used to excitement. We ain't used to teaching for too many hours. It's a certain way we do certain things, but this is key and this will always come up, especially now with more and more people that's claiming that they're Israelites that are of a darker hue of people because they want to keep holy days that Israel kept and there's nothing wrong with that, but we're at war right now. Apostle, I, I don't want to keep the Sabbath. I mean, I don't want to keep the or Christmas tree, but 
already said Christmas and Easter. I don't want to do that, but we have a lot of people, believers that do that, and we say that we have a freedom. So now they feel that there's a lot of Israel or Messianics or some people in here that might believe in Christ and believe that he died for the remission of sins, but at the same time believe that they're Israel, and it seems like they want to push certain things on us, certain feasts that Israel, and it seems natural. If Jesus and disciples kept it and they were Israel, should, shouldn't the Christian church keep it now also? But the problem is all of the Christian church is not Israel. Right. So I don't have to do every, I don't have to wear fringes to right. receive eternal life according to the Bible. Right. That's just not Bible. But right. the problem is somebody, we're pushing against each other now. So we're saying Israel want us to call, stop keep, or start keeping the feast days. Israel want us to wear fringes and we want to push the Christmas tree on Israel and tell them don't worry about them holy days and don't worry about that menorah. Don't worry about Pentecost. Don't worry about none of that stuff because it's all ceased in Christ and now that we're believers in the Most High. So these conversations are coming up. A lot of Christians, because we're still more powerful in numbers and finances, we're pushing against Israel and saying, ah, that stuff don't mean nothing. And anybody that's pushing the feast day, they're not doing it culturally. We're trying to act like y'all are wearing fringes and keeping the feast days for salvation. I don't think a lot of people, maybe, how many people in here think the feast days will give you eternal life, will give you salvation? I don't think the majority of people in here believe that, but a lot of us will act like that's the reason y'all are doing it and y'all are banging with us, like y'all are banging towards us, Christians, because you're like, no, the tree ain't got nothing to do with nothing. That ain't even in the book. So we're closer to the book than y'all. And then we have the outside people that don't know history of Pops and they're just looking, but they're saying, well, it do seem right. I do see Passover in the book and I don't see Christmas in the book. Right. And you know, so so it right. seems like more people are like, listen, these people are making more sense than those people. This is why these type of dialogues are important. Right. Very important for us to get into. All right, Apostle, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm even yeah. 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 And I'll say this, mm -hmm. this is the thing, you know, when we deal with culture, we have to make sure that Christ becomes the culture. That's very key. We cannot subject Christ to the culture, okay? Because Christ is a fulfillment of it. Mm -hmm. That's one point. But the other point is, the Bible says, unless you exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So that don't mean disrespect what the culture brings. That's the balance. And so we have two sides, as he said. We got one side that want to stop at the culture and bring Christ to the culture, not the culture to Christ. They want to bring Christ to the culture. And so because Christ came and he practiced the culture, and he but they don't deal with the fulfillment of it. That's why a lot of times the Hebrew Israelites, they stop at the culture and Christ. They accept Christ, but they stop right there. And that's the ceiling. They never move into kingdom things. So they never move into the kingdom because they stop right there. So they bring Christ to the culture. Oh, now, Apostle going to have me here for another two hours. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so that's one aspect. The other aspect, those who already accept Christ but don't want the culture, they say, I'm not dealing with the culture because I have Christ. Then that becomes the battle because Christ came to fulfill it. So how do we fulfill it unless you exceed the righteousness of the first need to see? So it's not the disrespect. If you want to do the Sabbath, you want to do those things and you believe that you're Israel, nothing wrong with that. The problem could be how far do you go with that? Do you go to Christ and move into the kingdom or do you stop there? Did you bring Christ to the culture or did you bring culture to the Christ? Because there's another there's another message or a, a, a way of thinking the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. We're not dealing with sin now. They say they love God. They they believe that they're Israelites. That's not your job to argue with them if they believe that, okay? And so you understand. And the kingdom is the culture. You're absolutely right. But a lot of times we don't move into that advancement. What do all that mean? Even church people, they use the word kingdom. They don't know what kingdom means half of the time. But what do kingdom really mean? But at the same time, you can't disregard what's Israel and the things that they're practiced because Jesus practiced those. So we have to do it. But we have to do it with the intent. Baptism, for instance, the first time when John did not want to baptize Jesus, what, what was his first word? Suffer it to be so, so that we can fulfill something. I'm fulfilling the law. So Christ is a fulfillment of it. He's the max. So in him. So what is Christ? The mindset. So that's so that's the key. So we got Christians who don't want to practice, watch this, the culture of Israel, which is God's original intent for God's people. Really, Israel is our example to see how God felt about people. It is our really our example. If you don't study Israel, you're not going to know the real heart of how God felt. That bled into the Gentiles, that, that they moved into, see? So that's important. But at the same time, 
At the same time, if you don't move into the Gentiles and the kingdom, you'll be stuck with the Israel doctrine and not move into the kingdom. But we got to do the whole, but the whole thing, ah, oh, man, you done brought up, ah, oh, why did I, that was up, who that was, that was somebody else, and I done clicked on that thing, and y'all, now y'all got me stuck, because we can't move on from this, because right. cultures are, this is cultural war, this right. is cultural war, if God gave, because we got to, we got to acknowledge, God did give, who said that right now, the Messiah gave Israel his culture, you right. can't separate Messiah from the culture he gave us. That's right. them. That's Israel. We can't. That I cannot. Can you agree with that, Apostle? Can you agree? Yes, with I agree with that. All right. All right. Now, now, now. Ah, oh, boy. We, if we, Yolanda, if we get into that kingdom, we're going to be here till lunchtime. I got a call at 10 o'clock. We're going to be here till <laughs> My point is not that we should separate it. My point is are we moving into the kingdom with it? But See, Gentiles, the thing is, Gentiles, the Gentiles, like my man said, the pastor of Florida said, Gentiles are running the show right now. Israel's coming into our own right now, but Gentiles are running the show right now. So the question is, what 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 culture do we follow? What should the Gentiles follow the Israelite culture? Because we got in his name shall the Gentiles such now that we got Gentiles that's um coming into the truth coming into the understanding or part of the assembly part of the church do they bring their culture with them did christ come to change culture can they bring their culture the problem is when things from european or an another african another culture come into the king come into this teachings and they're bringing things that were practiced in their spirituality which we call pagan and that because now you're worshiping the god of israel so just the problem, Gentiles worshiping the God of Israel now, but they're, are they bringing Gentile spiritual symbols and practices into the culture? That's and the are they, are people that are Israel, are y'all attempting to police us, the church, and right. tell us, get rid of the tree, or we finna go to hell, or we're not lining up with Christ with the tree. We got to use some other stuff, because the tree did come from a spirituality. The missile code came from certain things that the Celtic and the priest, we're trying to part. The thing is, when we bring that European, when we bring those cultures in, we're trying to separate the spirituality from the symbols, the mistletoe, the u log. We're trying to separate certain things like we're doing in the church today. Day. That's how right. people say whole time you got to keep an eye on the church because the church right now we're trying to separate Hinduism from yoga and say you can practice yoga. I'm getting out of here, y'all. This is it's, 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 it, it can definitely get it can definitely get it can definitely go sideways. It has already gone sideways. Let's just put it that way. And and I and I say this, brother Berean, I mm -hmm. believe this. I believe the spirit of God, wherever you led in God, you have to see if you led by the Holy Spirit. The spirit can lead you to do some things that's of the Israel culture. That make that, that should not be pagan, but, but Israel culture, and it'd be God. The, the problem I have is when the Israel culture sent us to hell because we're not practicing their culture. That's or what we're talking the about. Christians That's sending it. them to hell because that. they're not practicing Gentile. That's the problem, not the practice, but how we become dominant. That if you're not doing this, now you don't know God and you're not right. Then we don't have love to our brother because of difference of the Gentiles and 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 and, and, and the uh in Israel. We got to know that. And so, am I going to say that you need to uh, take that off your head? You don't need to wet on your head because we free in God? No, I shouldn't do that. Should I turn around and tell you, you're going to hell because you don't have this on your head? See, that's the problem. And so it's, and I think the young man you was with last week, he talked about that. It's the attitude in which Ella we Parker, have. yes. Yeah, right. And so that's the key. We have to understand that because when Christ becomes the culture, what do that look like? When we say Christ is the culture or kingdom is the culture, is it is it something added that Christ added to the culture? That was not part of the culture when it was just Israel culture. Before that, is there is there investment from what we already know? Is that the case? Do the Gentiles are able? Because this is what we got to get down to. Can the Gentiles do something that people who say that Israel can't do? Is there some freedom that is allowed in the Gentiles that's not allowed with Israel? Yes. Yes, that's the question. Yes. Does it seem like we saying that 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 we shouldn't have those freedoms, or you should have those freedoms? And and, and, and and this is where the beef come in. Some people say, listen, Berean, you say you want to speak up for Israel and we need to be fair with them, this and that. But they come to our rooms. They come to our thread. Listen to me, Israel. Listen to me. Listen to me, you regular folk right now. They said they come to our threads and they try to beat us in the head with Constantine and the Sabbath. They the bullies. It's not really us. Y'all trying to make it sound like it's the apologist that's banging on Israel when Israel coming and banging on everybody that's going to church, everybody that got the tree. Israel banging 
hanging on everybody, every woman that wear pants, every woman that wear lipstick, every woman that got a wig on her, and Israel is banging on us, and we got to free them, and they're really the aggressors, trying to and trying to make it a sound like Israel is trying to make it a salvation issue when this is really a culture thing. This is cult, as I said, this is cultural war right here. And we got to separate what's culture for the Gentiles, what's laws for the Gentiles, what's salvation to the Gentiles, and what Christ did, and what Israel continued and ought to continue to do and will continue even during the millennial reign. This is where that stuff come in. Some, right. not all, Lot said, good to see you, Lot. All right, come on, brother. Um, let me just, and, and let me just look at a couple key. of these. And I'm getting... I think that's the key, man, because... Like I said, when we say separate culture, like, is it possible when you in Christ? And this is what we have with Black Lives Matter. People say, man, when, when you say color don't matter, are you pulling away from culture? You're a black man. You can't get away from that. Am I really a black man? Is that how I'm supposed to identify myself? Am I supposed to be able to uh, not identify myself with black? Or am I supposed to not be able to say that I'm, that I'm made in his image and God is a spirit and that it's not about being colored? So, so that's always the war because you got spiritual people don't want to deal with color and you got color people who said you can't separate color so when i say that i'm made in the image of the god am i saying that i'm not black now see that's the case it's also the same thing when i say that i'm part of the gentiles and i believe in the kingdom am i also saying i'm not god's people and i think that's the problem because because we we we, we make that culture is so close to our identity it's so close to our identity that 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 to separate it becomes a problem, see, and that's what they identify. So, how we identify myself? Am I in Christ or am I Israel? And is that am I saying the thing? If a person says I'm Israel, is that saying the thing? Saying the same thing as I'm in Christ? Because most of the time, if you say you are Israel, even though you know you connected to God, most time we go right to what you believe. So we go right to okay, he said he's Israel. So that means he practices the Sabbath. That means this, and we automatically tie those things to your Israel, see? And so that's the problem. And so everybody who do not, uh, just, I go to church on Sundays, people say, I thought you said you was Israel. Okay, that's a problem, see? And that's what we have to talk about it, because how are we seeing one another? And I love you, when I first started listening to you, one of the things that I really love what you said, you said, you ain't going to say that my brother's Israel and not say what makes a person say? What makes a person in God? See, that's the that's the whole thing. See, and we got to deal with that. And how far do that go? See, and I think that's the key because a lot of times the questions that we're really saying, we're really not questioning salvation. We're questioning what we're practicing. We're really we, we're putting it like it's a salvation question. Are they in God? But what you're really saying is that how can they be in God and they still got a tree? That's what you're really saying. How can they be in God and they still do the Sabbath day? And we got to be honest and not be afraid that I think that certain things you can't practice and say you in God. We got to deal with it. a lot of times. That's how we think. <laughs> and, and, and and that's how come we could never leave lot. You can say what you want. We could never leave the basics. That's how come you have to have a foundation. A foundation of salvation. What a right. salvation. Because right. a lot of people, a lot of people involved in the church, a lot of teachers are saying people don't know what salvation is. So therefore they'll run and pick up anything. They'll run and pick up the Sabbath because they don't know that Christ is our rest. So we have to always deal with certain foundational issues to make sure people have that locked in so people start keeping the sabbath others are saying listen anytime you add anything anytime you add water baptism anytime you add the sabbath anytime you add not eating pork or dietary law, anytime you add anything to that cross you done added to the gospel of Christ. Now you got other people that's running around here saying, no, there was a gospel that Peter preached and he preached that to Israel and that had to do what with water baptism because Israel was a physical people and John and them baptized and then Paul preached just believe and, you're, and it's not mandatory to even have water but no matter they did baptize or Paul just preached believe and Peter just preached certain things of Israel and there's basically two different gospels. So we got, we got some things out here that do need to be discussed because people right. can take it somewhere else. And right. now, because we haven't had shown the foundational teachings on certain things, there are people that's involved in apologetics, that's involved in, in, in Christianity. And they're saying a lot of people are going over to this Israel thing like it's adding to their salvation from keeping the Sabbath and not eating pork. 
They're talking about saying it's cultural war. It, right. it, a lot of times, spiritually, they could be saved, but they're waking up to this thing. Israel, other people say, you ain't waking up to nothing. You were you alive in Christ. You ain't got to wake up to nothing else. But is it right to put down the culture? Did Paul and them, did Peter and them put down the culture? Right. That's where the thing coming. Oh, you you encouraging that nonsense? And well, no, no, no. I don't consider it. How can how can it be nonsense when it's book? Right. How can it be nonsense, Yolanda, right. when it's in the book? Right. So these people got a point. But like the other people are just saying, yo, they're being too aggressive. They trying to run up on us. They coming in our chats. They coming in our threads, and they coming and terrorizing the Christians and right. Christians and pastors and elders and people in the church get nervous because we were already having a falling away and people kind of leaving church. And now these people using the Bible and banging with the Bible and make people leave church, but not the Bible. Right. Because a lot of people leave the church and they keep the Bible talking about this Israel stuff now. So we're losing our numbers. So we're like, wait a minute, we got to shut these up. These devils got to get shut down. Is it a false gospel? Is it a devil? Are they devils or is this a political move? Are they making some moves? Like I said, Black Lives Matter, them folk making moves. Israel, like y'all just trying to make moves and snatching up people up out the church and y'all making moves trying to overthrow the church government. Right. I think there's some people trying to trying to be tyrants and overthrow the church. And then you get people, I get people, I got people that say, they come around, they say, that, that is their job. They say Christianity ain't got nothing to do with Jesus. And they say it's their mission to destroy the church. Right. Come on, Yolanda. Now y'all got to talk about where, where Sister Lewis at right now. And they want, and they believe it's God because it ain't God's will and it ain't book. Come on, sir. And, and this, I'm, I'm, this one time, Moran, it is so deep how we taught it. And I think we need to have this discussion even more. How close is your culture to your spirituality? How close is it? Is it thin? Is it two head? Two? Is it a? Is it a coin? Is it heads and tails? Is it the same coin to deal with that? I was preaching one time in the pulpit, and I knew people had certain judgmental spirits. So in the middle of my message, the people was jumping up and they were saying, "Praise God!" And he got a word, and it was all emotional, right? That I, I had, I had grabbed one of them earrings that you can clip on your ear. In the middle of my message, I threw it on my ear. And you should have seen the silence in the church. But the minute I threw that earring on my ear, the anointing left, God left, the devil came in. People got quiet, shouting everything. And I said, I'm the same man. I'm preaching the same word. But when they saw that earring, it tied them to a mentality. That's why I keep telling people, there's a mentality, there's a spirit behind everything that you do. Now, we're not the same person. Did God leave because of that earring? Is that really true? Now, should a man wear earrings? We can deal with culturally, too. We got some, some historical understanding that says when you pierce the ears, it was a slave. We got another historical, when you pierce the ear, it's, it was a sign of kingship. So we got two sides. Now, what's one we going to believe in? That's when we're dealing with culture. Now, did that make me less anointed because I got an earring in my ear? Now, what if I didn't put the earring in my ear, but when I get in the car, I put it on? Was it a difference because you didn't know it? Uh-oh. Or because you saw it? So we got to deal with all those things when we deal with it. Because there are some people who are keeping the Sabbath, but they're not keeping, they're still not holy. They, they, they go to church every Saturday. They never, miss a, they never miss a Saturday. And they keep the Sabbath day, but they don't keep Monday through, through Friday. So is that the key? So how far do we go with the similar? But do that mean a board keeping the server? See? So we got to deal with that. So we got to be honest with it. How far do we go? And what's all the things when God says something? What's all the layers to what he's saying? Because there's a whole lot of layers to what he's saying. See? So it's the same thing when I was growing up, Church of God in Christ, they told the women not to wear pants. But a whole lot of women was wearing dresses and had five babies with no husband. Thank so, you. So somebody was getting underneath them dresses, even though they was having them dresses. So did that really do what they thought the dress was going to do? No. Mm -hmm. Let me so do, we, do we miss sometimes? Do we miss sometimes? Do we miss the, the, the message in the lesson? Yeah, okay. and, 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 and we got to look at lots. Look, look at what and we appreciate you in the super chat. Look at what Chris said. He said, what about getting a fade or a lineup while we're being specific? Can you keep the whole law? Can you keep the whole law without yeah. the temple? There's a lot of things that people have to look at. So are these people deceiving themselves? So the church, and my thing is the church don't know half about what the law is about. The church don't understand some things. So it's good to bring these conversations up. Because right. people do want to know, am I keeping the law? Am I playing myself? Are you keeping the whole law? People think they out here keeping the whole law. And like I said, other people are challenging them saying, how can you keep the whole law without the temple? Or they're doing that and they don't understand the purpose of the law. Some people say parts of the law are, um, are, are, are discontinued. Certain things stop. Everything didn't stop with Christ. Dietary and some things did while some things different. And this is why this opens up. This opens up the floor for some good conversation. That's and, good, and, and, it, and it's that's important. Good. 
That's good. When you deal with the law, you're dealing with different linens that can't be mixed, you know, the silk and the different things like that. Uh, the priest couldn't own your own houses. So if you if you say you keep in the Sabbath, but you own your own houses, you go. I mean, there's so many laws in the Bible tells you that it can't be kept. That one law is going to break another. If you study all the laws, there's going to be a law that's going to break another. One. And so now we got to. Re- so what was the purpose of God telling us to keep them there? And so then, so then you have another doctrine that says, well, you shouldn't keep all the law, just keep the 10. And so then you get people to run to that and say, well, you ain't got to keep them all. You just got to keep the 10. If you keep the 10, then you'll keep them all. Is that true? Can you, can you keep the 10 and not be keeping the 10? Because even when the rich young ruler said, I've kept them since I've been young. Is that really true when we looked at it? Because, because he couldn't leave the money, he really didn't keep the third one. He really covered what he had. Even though he said he kept them all, he really didn't keep them all. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to go. I'm sorry. So Jenkins in here is she seeing anything? No, is she, she doesn't see anything. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. All right. All right. I was just looking through so much stuff. I, I don't want to play Movements that are religious out. and political. And, and yeah, I agree. I agree. Movements are religious and political. And we have to deal with the movement. What what before the cross? What what through the cross? What what after the cross? There's a whole lot of things. Uh, did mindset change or did practices change? Like I say, in the Old Testament, you see the word pay. In the New Testament, you see the word give. Is there a difference between paying tithes and giving tithes? Tithes just mean 10%. So did the attitude change? When you owe somebody, if you owe J.C. Penney's money, can they tell you to be cheerful? You don't have to. I owe you. So I don't have to be happy about that. But God says be a cheerful giver. Why is that important? And so we deal with the Sabbath day. When the Hebrew in the book of Hebrews, when it says that God is the Sabbath day, labor to enter to His rest. rest Was that always symbolic of resting in God? Did we take something that should have meant resting in God, and, and, and did we narrow it down to don't wash clothes and don't wash a car? But really, was it always a, a was the real meaning of the Sabbath means to rest in God, to rest in Christ, like He rests on the boat, even though it was full of water even on the seventh day he rests so if we, if we say rest in god how does god labor because god doesn't labor like we labor god labors with his voice and so when god labored he was creating so on the seventh day it just means he didn't say nothing he didn't speak so real rest is really being silent in god is that the real interpretation is there a revelation of the scripture or do we hold to the letter of the scripture in order to keep some of these laws alive see so we have to move into all that see you see what Wonderful said? What Wonderful said, this is the official position of orthodoxy. When we say orthodoxy, the right thing in church, the main church, most churches, if you're, if you're, if you're whatever denomination you may fall under, if you are a born again Christian, this is the position that most the Christians hold that Christ gave us commandments. And one comes from Deuteronomy 64, hero Israel, the Lord, your God is one. Loving right. one God and, 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 and on top of that, you got to love your neighbor as yourself and right. that hang all the law and the prophets. If you do that, you, if, if I love my neighbor, I ain't gonna sleep with my neighbor wife. I ain't gonna rob from my neighbor if I love my neighbor. And if I'm loving God, God's gonna write certain things upon our heart. This is the orthodox position. Now, others would want to argue, especially when they start arguing salvation, and he's gonna write it on Israel hearts, and it's only for Israel and stuff like that. And that's kind of stretching out the conversation. But we believe that if you keep orthodoxy teaches this majority of orthodoxy so anybody that says well i'm a christian and i keep the commandments and i keep the sabbath that's why we have historically called seven day adventists unorthodox or a cult a cult is a break away from right thinking or the way it's always been the nation of islam is a cult that came after real pure islam and they put some black spins and yaku and some different stuff on the pure straight right thinking so what historically Historically, the Christian church on this planet after the day of Pentecost did not continuously do things like keep the Sabbath. People started restoring, saying, listen, if we don't keep the Sabbath with Ella G. White, I'm doing separate from Israel right now. Ella G. White and Miller and them, they said Christ is coming back. They said Christ is coming back and Christ never came back. They started calculating, saying he didn't come back because we didn't keep the Sabbath. We got to start keeping the commandments and stuff. So they added the Sabbath day. That's where the Seventh Day Adventists come from. So historically, people are saying that if you're adding anything to the commandments that Christ, to the gospel that the apostles taught, the um, Acts 4 and um, 4 and 12, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. That's how can we go back historically to trace the doctrine? Did, did the apostles make everybody go to church? church on the Sabbath? Did the apostles make everybody get baptized, make everybody speak in tongues and run around and say, if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the whole, did the apostles do that? 
That's how I'm saying anybody that's adding anything else to the original doctrine, the original things that were taught to the Gentiles, not to Israel, because it looked like Israel continued to practice their thing. That's how can we can't be hard on y'all. But like I said, the, the church is saying that Israel, like y'all are coming and banging on us. Right. Y'all are coming to our threads and y'all are trying to gang up on us and try to make it sound like we going to hell because we don't keep the Sabbath. And we right. got to, like I said, define what's keeping the Sabbath, driving the car, washing your hair, going right. to church, because we know going to church on the Saturday didn't begin with Adam and Eve. That right. came in later on. Right. We got to make sure we said that. So there was people that didn't go to church on Sabbath, like Enoch and them, and they love the most high God. I don't think Noah went to the temple. I don't think Noah went to the Noah ain't do none of that stuff on the Saturday. What was the religion of Noah? Right. How was that religion? And those people weren't Israelites. So what is that religion? Right. That's where it comes into what's the true religion that's that's really come down from right. divinity at the beginning of time with Adam. Adam is just humankind with mankind in the beginning. Okay, come on, Pastor. I'm going to give it back to you to wrap it up. Well, I thank yeah. everybody for listening. I mean, this is great today. And this is where we need that dialogue. And I want to welcome everybody that may have a different train of thought because we need to know what's out there. We need to know what people are thinking. And so we can know how to bring clarity. And there's some things that we may need to separate. There's some things we may need to get rid of. And so we need to look at that. So thank you for listening to us. And we try. this is what we try to do every time we talk. We have to have dialogue. And until we know what's really on your mind, we can't bring correction. This is why we have to talk. Church have hurt us because we haven't we haven't created a platform to tell to tell people or ask people, well, let me see how you think about that. Do you feel about that? And do you know why you think about that? And this is the last piece I'll say this. Can you love them even though they may not agree with you? Can you love them? Can you sit down with your brother and can you say, you know what, let's talk about that. Let me tell you why I don't believe that and let me share it with you. And they still feel the love for them, not for you to correct them. OK, because there's a difference between loving me or, or hating my issue. And a lot of times we don't love the person. We just hate the issue. And so we're trying to prove them wrong so we can prove us right. But have that real dialogue. Because at the end of the day, I may know what you're saying is not correct, but I also know what God told me concerning you. And I know that we're going to walk together. That's the reason why our connection, you have to be mature within with immaturity. And so we all, nobody knew this coming out, coming out the womb. So we all are learning and growing. And so we need that. And that's the key, be able to sit down. Can you walk into your brother's house who you had a great time at your job? He invited you over for dinner. And when you walk in his house, he had a Christmas tree. And you really enjoyed him at the job. And when you walked in the house and seen the Christmas tree, did it change who he was in your mind now? Or can you still say, that's my brother, there's some things that God may want me to see. Can you really look at that? Because we really don't know one another until we walk with one another. This is about relationship. This is not just about having doctrine that doesn't work when it comes to walking. That's why we have to love one another, have love one to another. You can have something for me and never get it to me. Can mm. you get it past my doctrine, past my church of God in Christ, past my arrogance or my ignorant ways and still say that's my brother and we're going to walk together. Until we do that, we're not going to be able to exchange because there may be something related that I need to know about you that only that tree would have brought up. And, there, and sometimes we missing the relational part because the doctrine part separates us. Truth ain't supposed to make us lead. Truth is supposed to make us be able to come together. Okay? And so I wanted to say that. So thank you for coming. And as always, if you want to be a blessing to us, you know Dollar Sign Berean TV, Dollar Sign Apostle Robert Jenkins, that's available for you. But if anything we want you to get out of this, let's sit down and talk. And let's see when we get up I know you more now. I understand your struggles, my struggles, and it helped me. That's what our conversation should be. At the end of the day, I should I should be able to see the devil more clearly because I got to know you. I ain't blaming you as the devil, and I ain't making the devil you. I know the difference because we had talk. Why did Jesus spend three and a half years with ministries? He, he prepared 30 years for three and a half. We, we prepared three years for 30 years. We mm. got to do the opposite. And we and Jesus walked with him every day. Who are you walking with with all this truth you have? Have it made you walk away or has it made you walk with? Amen. Come on, brother. Close us out. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you for the information that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for the love you have given us. And thank you, Lord, even while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And we thank you, Lord, that you bring us into a place to be conformed to the image of your son. So we thank you for all of our brothers and sisters and everyone that shows up to want to know you better, to come to know you and who you are, God. And we bless you for it. So have your way in our lives. We yield everything over to you. And God, we want to give you praise and glory in advance for what you're doing through this ministry, that the light is coming on. You told us 
us that the light has come and we thank you for it to be light carriers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.